The winner of the 2017 People's Choice Award is presented to Adjustments for Life and Dr. Joseph Arve for having the best product or service and overall customer satisfaction. Adjustments for Life is a maximized living center and it's just an amazing place for people to come and get healthy. Call me crazy, but what we do in this office every day is the solution to the healthcare crisis. Health doesn't come from a bottle of pills, a bottle of vitamins. I mean, we've got more gyms, we've got more nutrition stores, we've got more hospitals, we've got more Walgreens, and that's all good. But if you look at the statistics of people and their health, we see cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, divorce, poor test scores, childhood obesity, childhood diabetes, all getting worse. So on one hand, we're spending all this money on healthcare, and yet society is not benefiting from all of that, except in here, that we get people back on the track of health and healing. I started this health thing back in 1987 by going to chiropractic college, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then I got out in 1991, I came to Colorado in 92, and man, I've been, I've been telling the same message that your body needs no help to heal, just no interference. And every year, medical science has been validating what I've been doing here and what I've been saying for the last 25, almost 30 years. We call it Spine Geek Nation. I like to see a life-giving center like this in every city across the world because what we do gives people back their health. It gives them back their hope. It gives them back their future. I'm still working six days a week, why? Because the need is there. We see a lot of people, why? Because the need is there. It's not that I have big goals to see a lot of people, it's that I realize that one in three women are on the road to being diagnosed with cancer sometime during their life. One out of two men. And so people say, oh, you're busy. How many do you see? I say, not enough because the, the need in our city is like this and we're just scratching the surface. So the vision of what I do right now, after 25 years, I'm trying to put everything down into a system that I can give my children, that I can give other doctors to take around the world so we can put an end to sickness and suffering. Dr. Joe has a gift and a talent for reading the body. He warms us up, gets us on the table, and treats individually what's needed. It's been a blessing to come here with the problems that I've had and come out with solutions. It's amazing who we get to see. You know, I was the chiropractor for the Colorado Rapids. Professional athletes, when they won their championship in 2010. Um, I take care of Olympic athletes. I was a maximized living doctor for uh, the Olympic team for wrestling and for judo in 2012, and our athletes won gold medals. Uh, I was in Rio, Brazil, and our, our Olympic athletes won gold medals there. So we take care of a lot of high-level athletes, but also we take care of newborn babies because of birth trauma. We take care of children because of ADHD and autism and just you know all the health, childhood health issues. We take care of teenagers because right now, teenagers, the health of teenagers suffer the most. And where can they go to get a really a non-toxic, healthy, loving healthcare provider? That's what we provide. And then adults, families, seniors, we wanna keep them out of the nursing home. And so we really have a, a variety. We don't have an ideal customer. If you have a spine, if you're breathing, if you want to be healthy and maximize your health, that's who we see. My key to success, you know, I've been here 25 years and it's not easy being in business for 25 years. And so I have to say God first, that this is his place. My family lets me be me. So my wife of 28 and a half years, she puts up with me. My children, we were family owned and operated for many years. My children work here. My team, I just love them to death. And, and their family. Our mission is people. Um, it's all about people. And we, you know, we tell people that in this office is life and fun and healing. Let us put your needs first and, and figure out what you need to be healthy, be happy, and be strong. And as we people really genuinely feel that we care about them, then that, you know, we never have a problem with new business or anything else because when you love people, they, they love you back and it's, it's a fun place. And that's why we've been here for 25 years. So good morning, everybody. No, I'm not Dr. Joe. <laughs> I asked Dr. Joe earlier this week if I could uh, give a testimony of um, how he's changed our lives, my husband's and mine's lives, for the last four years. So um, I made some notes because being up here is a little scary. Um, so I just want you to know we've been coming this January 
will be four years. And uh, we were both overweight. Our health was not good. Uh, we had been praying and asking God, what do we do? Because we couldn't afford to do a whole lot of different things. And we were just trying to focus on something. So our friend Shauna invited us to a weight loss clinic in January. Well, that made sense. It was right after the holidays. And that's what we were looking to do. So we went. But what we got was far more than just weight loss information. Dr. Joe has done so much more for us, and I want you to understand. Um, I'm a veteran, and uh, I have PTSD. Yes, I thank you. And uh, but I got a back injury when I was in the military. So the only thing that's been done over the last 50 years for that back injury is pain pills. Lots and lots of pain pills. A little bit of physical therapy didn't it helped a little bit, but not a lot. But Within six weeks of coming here and getting adjusted by Dr. Joe, I didn't spasm anymore when I went to bed at night. I could sleep all night long. I could actually roll over and not be in pain. And I could get out of bed and stand up and not be stiff and sore. The pain pills are gone. As a matter of fact, all seven of the, the pain pill, or not just pain pills, but all seven of the medications that I was on, they were all gone within three months of coming here and learning how to take care of things. Cholesterol's down. Um, the swelling in my ankles is down. I, I can't even begin to tell you all the different changes that were made. So I didn't just get weight loss information. I understood how the spine is connected to everything in my body. Um, I began to understand that I was making my body bad by the decisions that I was doing, the foods I was eating, the lack of exercise, the lack of proper exercise, lots of different things. I want you to also know that my husband is about two inches taller than he used to be. When he, when he came, his knees were bad and he, and he kind of had a little shuffle about his walk. Um, he now doesn't shuffle anymore. He walks with his confidence. He stands a little taller. He's lost 102 pounds in the last four years, and I've lost about 30. And then gained a little, and then took some off. <laughs> which we're all in the learning process, right? I can do my gardening again, which I couldn't do before. I can do walking. I have been in marathons with my daughters, and we walk now, which we, I couldn't do before. So I want you to know I am 69 years old and I can outwalk one of my daughters who's in her <laughs> 40s, okay? I couldn't do any of those things until we came and we actually put into practice all the knowledge that he's shared with us over the last four years. So with that, I predict Dr. Joe. Thank you, Steve. All right. So welcome to Sugar Brain. This is going to be, uh, and so when I say sugar brain, what, is, what do you think of when I say that? Sugar. Now, not, this talk today is re not really for anybody in this room. I know, you got it all. You're here for your friend who couldn't make it today. And I, and I get that, I get that. And this is, a, this is a family event, so if anytime you need a snack or anything like that, go help yourself. When we're done, I'm going to show you the world famous Dr. Joe Coffee and what that's all about. Um, hello to all the 10 million Facebook listeners that couldn't make it here today, but promise me you'd watch while you're doing whatever you're doing right now. Welcome, okay? And so tonight, today, we're going to talk about the brain. Now, I've got many reasons to talk about the brain. Um, because the brain, if you lose your brain, newsflash, everything shut down. We really can't underestimate what your brain does for you. Hi, hon. Good to see you. So we really need to f focus and pay attention to what this thing called your brain does for you. And we'll answer most of society's problems today just in this five-hour workshop, okay? <laughs> so the whole point of me doing this today is to help you put an end to any unnecessary suffering in your life, okay? If there's any unnecessary suffering going on, 
You don't have to have it. Look to your partner and say, it doesn't belong there. Look to the person on the other side and say, you don't have to have it. You don't have to have it. So that's the whole point. Everything I'm going to say to you is, is to help you put an end to unnecessary suffering like in Diana and, and Pastor, Pastor Diana and, and, Dave, and um, Gary's. What's your name again? Gary's. <laughs> Been here four years. I, I, get, I need to practice my own preacher, okay? And again, give a hand to Mrs. Arve and my team and the helpers and Scott and all of you for coming. Give yourself a hand for being here. Good. And what I want to tell you, just like you saw here, God's still in the healing business. Raise your hand if you were here Thursday afternoon about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. How was I walking? I was not good. It was not good. And I just got to take a few minutes and just tell you what happens here. I was doing handstands on Thursday morning. Why? Because I like to, okay? That's just fine. It was my workout for the day. And I fell out of it wrong, and my foot slammed right down really hard, like oh oh hard. And I laid there, and I'm like, I'm like, uh oh. I immediately saw this black boot. Because a few of you have been wearing these shoes, these magic shoes and boots the last few weeks, and I've been, okay, teasing you about there's nothing magic in the boot. You know, you're throwing everything off when you walk with it, you know, but the doctor says you have to wear it or it won't heal. Well, okay, so I thought maybe that was, this was God getting back at me for that, right? <laughs> So I saw myself wearing a boot eating humble pie going, look at my boot. But I said, no, in Jesus' name, that's not going to happen. Amen. So I got up I and I stood there and I was, I was okay. Came in the mo Thursday morning, worked, did my thing. I, I sat on the floor at lunchtime, just, you know, nothing, just kind of my foot back. And me and Grant went to get up and go walk to the car. And all of a sudden, I'm like... What is this nonsense? You know? And I'm like, all right, I'll walk it off. I'm driving home to, to, to lunch, and it's like pushing the gas pedal is like becoming impossible. I'm like, uh-oh. And you know when you twist your leg and you get off of it and it's fine and it leaves you alone? No, no, no. This kept doing this. So I go and I take, I have my special meeting at 2 o'clock, which is a nap. And I'm laying there, <laughs> and this thing is not stopping. It's not, it's like getting madder and angrier and madder. And no matter what position I put it in, I elevate it. Everything I tell you to do, elevate it, move it. It's not good. So I come down and, and I lean, grab, runs down and grabs the whole box of all my sport injury equipment. I'm like, here, what do you need? I said, let me wrap it. So I wrapped it and I'm making me a sandwich and all of a sudden it just starts, boom, throbbing, throbbing, throbbing. I'm like, that ain't going to help. So I unwrapped it. I put my shoe on, tied it tight and said, okay, here we go. So I get out to the car. And Chuck and, and, and Jenny saw me. I was walking down the sidewalk, literally. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I mean, like this, right? And then I realized if I push off on my, little, on my big toe on the inside, now I got some stability. <laughs> it's 2.45. I walk in here. I, I, with my adjusting tool, I adjust it. Adjust, and I, I turned on Psalm 91. And one of the things I'm going to tell you is read the Bible. Okay, I know. Newsflash, read the Bible. But in this, in this thing, there's a psalm. There's, there's prayer. It's psalm. The P is silent, so you, it's P-S-A-L-M. Psalm 91. Read it out loud. If your child, children are sick, read it out loud. If you're sick, read it out loud. You're having a bad day, read it out loud. you got friends that are in the war. Pray it over them daily. There's a story about a general that prayed this over his men in one of the wars every day, and none of them got killed. So there's, there's healing in Psalm 91. I use it all the time. So in my car, I don't read anymore, uh, you know, because I'm busy eating lunch. So, <laughs> so I have it on my iPhone, and I, when I hit the Bible app, I can, one of the, a couple of the verses, the message version, again, this is all part of the workshop. I'm going somewhere with this. Um, I hit Psalm 91, and I'm driving. I'm just letting it wash over me. I'm like, no, I'm not. I chose to see myself walking strong, healthy, healing. Because, you know, some of you, God bless you, are like, if he goes down, what are we going to do? <laughs> he's, not allowed to, he's not allowed to be walking like this. Wait a minute here. Because I don't have anybody to come in and take over. They're all working. My friends are all working. All right? So, uh, so um, I come in. I adjust it. I stand on the Vi platform. And if, and if you can tolerate the Vi platform, it's probably not broken, but it still could be fractured. 
So I'm on it, and I'm like, okay, all right, okay, all right. So you guys start coming in at 3 o'clock, and I'm like, I'm just like trying to go around the table, literally trying to adjust, and I'm like doing this, and I take the gun, and I put it on my back, and I'm checking you, and you're also getting good adjustments, okay? I'm dying over here, but you're still getting good adjustments. And then I had to show Ken his x-rays, and I stood there, and I go, I got to walk all the way back there. So I start walking. So... Uh, so some of you had, had pulled me aside. And be careful when you have a practice full of Christians. Because this is their opportunity to grab you and pray for you. I go, I go, I got people waiting for me. Okay, go ahead and make it quick. Pray, let's go. <laughs> you just go healed. That's all you got to say. <laughs> so, so again, so I'm like, thank you. And I'm, I'm seeing in my mind, okay, half of me is like, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. The other half of me is like, you're not working tomorrow. And how are you going to prepare for the talk? And this is, you know... I'm tr I have that battle, like, like you never have that battle, okay? But I had it that day, right? Okay? And this is basically the whole talk. I should be done in about 10 minutes. We'll be done over here. So all of a sudden, by the grace of God, your prayers, and, and just God himself, about 5 o'clock, I'm like, it still hurts, but it's not angry. 5.30, it still, hurt, it still hurts and swollen, but it's not mad at me anymore. By 5.45, I'm raising on my toes. By 7 o'clock, I'm walking. And by today, I'm jumping jack in and ready to go. Now how, did, now, how did that happen? I don't know. And I don't care. All I know is I was Thursday afternoon walking like this, and now I'm able to do whatever I want to do, right? It's still a little puffy and swollen, to remind me. It's no bruising. No bleeding. Well, was it really hurt? You saw me walking. I don't even like to show you I'm hurting. Like when I'm down, you, no one knows it. Nobody knows it. That day, you knew it. Because I, I, it, it was, I mean, I couldn't suck that one up. On a, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, it was an 11. Oh, no, I'm telling you. It was, it was like, it just, you know how that pain just takes your mind away? And you can't think about nothing. Well, you guys don't know what that's like. But I, I did on that day. Okay. So I just want to say what... For, for whatever you've got going on, I don't know how it's going to heal, but it will. For those of you who have any brain issue stuff going on today, I don't know how, but I know what to do. I know what my part and your part is, and then I know what God's part is. Okay? And we'll let God do his part, and we won't ask him why or how or when. We'll just trust that he's a good papa. Like I told someone today, I don't care how my, got, my dad got the 20 bucks. All I cared about is that he had it when I asked for it, right? So... And I thought, that was pretty good. I'll think about that one. So the thing is, is that tell your friends. When you're, we were talking about the brain today because it's so important. But when you come in here, crazy stuff happens called healing. And I wish I had a manual to show you exactly this, the 10 steps to your deliverance. Ain't going to happen. We're just going to pray. We're going to do our part. And we're going to expect healing. So when you come in here, okay, here's a, here's a concept I'm playing with. When you come in here, I see some, none of you in this room, but when you come in here, where's a guest at? I saw you. When you come in here, we're a, little, we're a little crowded, we're a little busy, so you should see them. I got the TV playing, I got great videos playing, we're having fun, free water, all the water you can drink, right? <laughs> We've got chairs lined up, kids playing over there, and we're kind of crowded. So they walk in and they go, oh, how long is this going to take? And I'm like, oh, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> Here, I've spent the last 25 years praying for the glory cloud to come down and heal whoever walks in. And people are just too busy to sit here for a while and hang out. Now, I know it's none of you in this room. I know none of you do that. <laughs> but those of you watching, you know who you are, right? And if you're watching this video while you're wobbling, keep wobbling. Stop walking around. <laughs> Where was I? So, so here's the thing. A pic picture me at the, at the Pacific Ocean, and my wife tells me to come back. My wife says, fetch me some water from the Pacific Ocean. Right? Now, what do I bring to gather that water? If I bring a thimble, then she's, she and I are going to get a thimble worth of the Pacific Ocean. If I bring a bucket, then you're going to get a bucket's worth. You know why? Because a bucket is all you can handle right now. If you bring a barrel, then you're going to get a barrel full because that's all you can handle right now to carry. 
If you bring a tanker, right, all you're going to get is a tanker full of the Pacific Ocean because that's all you can handle. But if you step in that water and you say, give me all you've got, Lord, for me. I know this is mine to have. Bring it. And I have full expectation. Then bring it. Now, if you don't have a good picture of yourself or your life or what's possible, if you're not seeing yourself healthy, strong, vibrant, fully alive, green grass we talk about, then that's going to be an issue when you come in here and you're going to see how busy we are. But if you come in here expecting the healing, not knowing how, and it's not about me, it's not about me, it's not about me, but you trust that God's going to do something through us or I'm going to, he's going to tell me to say something to you that's going to set you free, not just for the day, but maybe for the rest of your life. So I, I, don't, I didn't know how I was going to wrap this, and I do it in love, but when you come in here, expect God to do something crazy. And it's going to be good because he's good. And this isn't church. This is just how you're going to keep your brain from going crazy in this world. And you know, so that was basically the gist of today. And it's been happening for 25 years. Every day there's a new miracle being served up here. So that's why I say that. So God's doing something here. Everybody watching, come get you some. Tell your friends to come get you some. We'll figure out some things to do. But basically, you always leave here smiling. And we always do our best. Again, I do know we're helping lots of people and God's bringing, bringing people here and we're doing our best to be efficient with that. I'm not here to, to waste your time, but have fun. Have fun, have fun, have fun. Okay. And again, we're on websites. We're, Spine Geek is the Facebook page. You, if you like these videos, go to YouTube, type in Spine Geek, and oh, there's a bunch of things. I have short hair, I have long hair, I have, I have man buns, all kinds of stuff, okay? You'll know, you'll know what year it is based on the length of my hair. <laughs> And if you just met me, I have been around the world delivering this healing process to Olympic athletes. Uh, I've been to the London 2016 Rio Games. I was a chiropractor for the Rapids when, when they ran, won the championship. Okay, that's my family. It's Mrs. Arve again. Check her out later on with her beauty counter, non-toxic makeup and things and hair products. That's me. That's Luke. That's Leah. That's Grant. And that's May. And so that's my family. And then this is our office family. This is Carrie, that's Julie, Grant, myself, and Jesse. So again, give them a hand for helping us get this together, okay? And again, if we have any issues about who this guy is that's presenting to you, well, come here, come here, come here and talk. He, well, what kind of doctor is he? A chiropractor, oh. Well, here's the thing, you heard this last time. You should go to the doctor that has more educational hours in school, in college, right? Right. Well, my education, according to the medical system's education, is I actually have um, about 300. I have about 300 more education hours compared to the medical system. Right. So I have more schooling. I have more education. I have a nicer tie. Okay. <laughs> I have a man bun at 50 at 52 years old. Right. Okay. This is free. I don't know why last night. But last night, I got teased in my dreams. And people look at me going, you're going bald. So I woke up this morning going, I ain't going bald because my hair's like this in the morning. Right? You, you don't want this out. I'm not going bald. And if you like the Bible, there's a story about when these kids called one of the prophets baldy. Mm -hmm. And you saw what happened. So don't call me bald, all right? <laughs> these bears came out and attacked and ate the kids. It's graphic. It's one of the cool stories in the Bible. <laughs> So when it comes to the brain, when it comes to the brain, I know a lot about the brain because your brain is what's allowing you to breathe right now and to live and to move and your heart to beat. Your brain's the first thing that was formed in your mother's womb. It's the thing that God whispers to and then it whispers it to you. OK, so without your brain, you couldn't be here. You couldn't get here. You couldn't enjoy my jokes. Right. right. Like the guy who was addicted to brake fluid. But he said, it's okay, I can stop anytime. <laughs> Plus, over the last 30 years, <laughs> I've done over, I've done a bunch of TV talks, I've done a bunch of TV shows. I help lead this Maximize Living Health thing. Um, I, I, I don't have very many patients that have actually been under active care and they've gone into 
a, a, a nursing home because of Alzheimer's. My patients don't forget their names or who, and, and who I am. And they don't forget who, who their spouses are, right? And just to even make it even cooler, that's me and my balloon speaking to the M NFL Alumni Association. Does the NFL have a problem with brain injury right now? How are they doing it fixing it? Not good. You know why? Because the problem's not the brain. You're going to learn in a minute what it is. It's not the brain. Yeah, your brain gets hit. That's not good. But there's more to it than just the brain. Okay, we'll talk about that. But I've spoken to the NFL Alumni Association in Las Vegas at their conference. And so, again, I know a lot about the brain. Okay, I know a lot about the brain. And again, here's the thing you don't understand, and we talked a little bit about it. When I'm your doctor and I'm treating you and I'm helping you get your brain functioning the way God wants it to function, we have to deal with the spiritual issues that are causing your brain to shut down, the emotional issues that's causing your brain to shut down, and the physical issues that cause your brain to shut down. Because guess what? Your brain runs all three. Your brain's what makes you healthy and whole, body, mind, and spirit. So we have to address all those issues so that you can smile more and get your life back on track. So understand, again, in this book, and this is not a religious thing. I look at the last 4,000 years of, of principled living, of patterns. I like to obey the laws of, of the world, the universe, laws of gravity. I like the law of gravity. I try to obey it or I get hurt, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's laws that I can trust in on how things work, and if I get in line with that, then my body, my mind, my life will work, not perfectly, but a whole lot better than if I don't get in line with it. Does that make sense? And so in this Bible, when I read it to find out who I am, where did I come from, I'm not from monkeys, newsflash, okay? God said, let's make man, me, let's make Joe in our image, according to our likeness, and let's make Joe have dominion over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's what God said about Joe, me. And guess what? He said the same thing about you. Whether you know it, whether you believe it or not. Okay? But if you don't know it, you can't tap into its promise. Right? My aunt passed away back in August. We're still finding accounts of money that she has stashed around. It all goes to my mom, but if we can't find it, guess what? It doesn't go to my mom. She doesn't know it. So there's promises in here that go to you. Again, God said, let us make Chuck in our image, Jenny, right? Uh, Beatrice, Gary, Joe. And uh, this is for you. He made it for you. And if you're the only one on this earth, he still would have done it for you. He loves you that much, okay? So, and again, I declare. Again, you have to learn about your brain. You have to learn that you, your brain doesn't know. Your brain, whatever you tell it to do or you think it to do, it will. Your brain doesn't know right from wrong. It just knows what you think and what you say. So if you say, I'm angry, okay, I'm angry. I'm happy, okay, I'm happy. It, it's, it, it's waiting for you to choose what to do. The more you fill in it with good, the more good it's going to produce. The more you fill it in with bad, it says, okay, I guess we're going to die. I guess we're going to check out. I guess we're going to become whatever it is you're thinking about the most. So it's important to take every thought captive. It's even important to read things over yourself that may not feel true, that may not look true, but that's where you want to go with your life, right? Like when my ankle was like this, I did not want to go another day like this, right? But some of us may say, this is how it's going to be the rest of my life. How am I going to do something in five years, right? How am, I walk my, how am I going to walk my daughter down the aisle like this? And she's five. I mean, we go, we, we, we take our today's injury and we project it so far out that now that becomes our reality. Yeah, that's, right. well, that's good. That's good. So here's things that I read and my son reads and my son makes his friend that he takes to school read, right? This is Joe Osteen. He's got a book called 31 Declarations. I haven't read the book. I just read the declarations. Okay, there's 31. So here's one. I declare and I speak this over all of us. God is working all things together for your good, our good. He has a master plan for our life. There may be things we don't understand right now, but we're not worried. We know all the pieces aren't here yet. One day it will all come together and everything will make sense. We will see God's amazing plan 
taking us places I, we never dreamed of. This is our declaration. And again, understand, I don't know what your father was like growing up. I don't know what your view of God is. But I'm here to tell you, if you want your brain to work better, we need to kind of fix that and improve that, okay? That's all I'm saying. What makes me and my wife successful after 28 years of marriage, you know, and, and just being healthy and not dealing with a lot of stuff we see out there is we choose to believe and follow what this says. Is it stupid? I don't know, but I like my life. And I like my brain right now. And it's working pretty good. So I'm just giving you maybe another solution, another thing to try, okay? So I like saying that stuff over my family. And I say that over you because it's true. You don't have all the answers right now. But I can tell you, when you look at everybody's brain out there, how's it working so far? I mean, how's it working? It's crazy out there. I just went home to Michigan for a few days. And I got reminded real quick why I don't go home to Michigan very often. <laughs> I'm pathetic when I'm not in my bubble, when you guys aren't around me. I'm pathetic, okay? Because again, that's you. That's how God sees you. That's you. I love that one right there. That's you. That's how God created you. So what happened the last 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 years? That's still you. That's the you God created. That's the you your parents saw. That's you. My job is to help you find that person again and turn that person back on. Find that brain. Can you see everything okay? Okay, good. So Hosea 6, again, where, is I, where do you find Hosea? In here, okay. It says, even in the Old Testament, people of all ages are sick, they're suffering, and they're dying because they have a lack of knowledge. And I added to it a lack of doing. Because you can say, oh, I, I believe in you, Dr. Joe. I know exactly what you're doing. I, you go ahead. And I'm like, well, when's the last time you got adjusted? Oh, I only go when I hurt. Okay. And then you may know, but you're not. A I see your actions. I see your words. Um, I listen. I'm always listening to all of you. Because I want feedback on what, A, is being whispered to you in this year. Because I know what I'm whispering this year. Okay. Diana gave me the greatest compliment in the world the other day. She says, did you talk about the blood pressure thing? I was waiting for that to come. You didn't. She was having blood pressure issues. And she's like, should I go take medicine? I'm like, I don't think it's a lack of medicine problem. So she says, I got you talking in this ear, and then I got Jesus in this ear telling, him, telling me to listen to you. And I'm like, yes! It's, it's always a good day when God says to you, listen to Dr. Joe. I don't care what you say. It's a good day. I must be saying something right if God's telling you to listen to me, right? Okay. So, and we have fun with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she delivered the toys to the children and immediately the blood pressure changed. Because, again, brain fog, blood pressure, that's your body giving you a warning saying something's not right. And we're not going to run. I'll show you in a minute. We're not going to run to, to if it's not an emergency, a medical emergency, so you don't have to necessarily run there. But we have to fix everything we can first so that everything calms down. And lo and behold, it worked. And, and healing took care. Because here's the problem. Lifestyle is killing us. I mean, things like this. 95% of all your issues and my issues are based on how we live. It's not your genes. It's not your health insurance. It's not the Walgreens. It's not your gym. It's not your health food store. It's literally how you're living every day. The habits you're making, the changing, what you're choosing to believe about yourself or not believe about yourself, what you're choosing to learn more about or not choosing to learn about because we already know it all. So this is a lifestyle right here. So again, is that good or bad for his brain? Yeah. If he does that for the next 50 years, is his brain going to be healthy or sick? Sick, right? But whose fault is it, though? The government's fault? He's the one who put the cigarette in his mouth, right? And his parents, maybe, yeah. But again, moms... Your children's health is not a reflection of your identity and who you are as a person. Then you say that again? Moms, your child's health, especially if they're after 13. They're beyond the Avery. Oh, how old are you? How do you use Avery? Okay, especially if they're 10 or older, right? They know. 
they know. My mom said, no, soda pop, but she's not here. Okay, mom, I'm sick. And you're like, oh, what did I do to my baby? I'm freaking out because they're coughing and they got fever. That's good. It's okay. It's not your fault. Don't worry. It's not about you, mom. It's okay. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. What about that, though? Where's Jennifer? Does that look, does that look like, okay. Freebird, it's a song. Freebird, they flick their bicks, you know, in the air. It's an old rock and roll song, okay. Only people who drink Jim Beam and smoke as a baby like that song. That's okay. So, again, if you're having brain issues or someone you know has brain issues or they're having issues, they may not know about it. They're not a bad person. But I promise you, if we looked at their life, the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years, you would see a trail of choices and habits that create the life you have today. The good news is that you can change that if you want to, if you want to. So again, three T's. Everybody say three T's. Three T's. So the first one is trauma. trauma. Say trauma. trauma. And more specifically, trauma to your nerve system. The second one is toxins. Say toxins. toxins. That's anything that doesn't belong in your body you still put in it. Anything you can't pronounce. And then you drink, you eat, you rub, you scrub, you breathe, you, you're around your environment. It can have a negative effect on your brain. And the last thing is negative thinking. Stinking, th say stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. So now, the thing is, is that other cultures have ways to deal with trauma, toxins, stinking thinking. The Bible taught the Israelites, the, di the different Hebrew nations, the Christians, how to live in a way to try to deal with these three T's on a regular basis. The country of Italy takes the whole month of August off to go on vacation, to help download. Uh, other cultures take naps, other cultures have tea time. But in America, we're too busy for that. We're too busy for that. Your grandmother told you to stand tall for a reason, not to badge you because she knew back in her day, the taller you stood, the healthier you were, right? And she cooked with real food, yeah. right? And she did not allow you to say a bad thing about yourself or for her for any reason, right? And there's even, even African countries, things like I've been to Zimbabwe and stuff. They have a culture, whether, you, whether you're aware of it or not, they deal with these three T's, but not in America. So therefore, <clears throat> the three T's happen to everyone. You, your, your brain, your body, your life, everyone has trauma, toxins, and stinking thinking. You have a choice, though, to carry that into your day or to do something to, to unwind that and to deal with it, right? Or at least go into your day being aware that trauma, toxins, and negative thought could potentially happen to you and how to be on guard. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. Because if you don't, then today's purpose is your brain is under attack. Your brain is under attack. And therefore, you're choosing daily to make tomorrow better based on how you deal with these three T's or you're just living the life, you'll get to it someday, it doesn't really matter, one won't hurt, but it's never just one. Therefore, you're getting the future you don't want, you will not like, and will get stuck spending all your money on. Aunt Bonnie, diabetic for 30 years, never married, never children, spends the last three years in a nursing home. Why? Because of the 30 years of choices of living her life one day at a time, but it goes by fast. Love my Aunt Bonnie, but, but that's, it's right there. We had a memorial service last, um, <laughs> last Saturday, Thanksgiving. And some of my mom's friends go, I didn't know your son was a pastor. And she started laughing. She goes, well, he just likes to share his faith. He can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what do we call him? And I'm like, ah, just call me bishop or rabbi. That's okay. <laughs> so, all right, everybody say green grass zone. Green grass zone. Flip open your notes. You'll see your notes. Okay. What zone did God make your body to live in? Green, Green grass zone, right? right? So God made your body to be healthy. God made your body to be strong, just like green grass. Again, I don't need 87 research articles on how and why God wants grass to be green. I just know that if I water the grass like I'm supposed to, then it's going to be green, right? Okay. That's your promise. Your brain should be strong and healthy every day of your life. Up to 120 years, the Bible and research called Blue Zone and other countries like Harvard or colleges and countries say, okay, it's only in America we see all the, a lot of these different diseases and stuff. Okay? So your promise is to be healthy. Your brain doesn't have to be sick. 
You don't have to forget your name. You don't have to have brain fog. You don't have to always forget where your keys are. You don't always have to, uh, uh, you know, have poor vision, get the shakes and have Alzheimer's. You don't have to. Amen. Okay, you don't have to. Now, if you don't know how to prevent that, that's what today's all about. But the whole point is that your body is promised health and healing, just like green grass. And as long as I water the grass, then I get this. Make sense so far? Yeah. But if I kink your hose, what happens to your grass? Brown. It turns brown first, then it dies. So there's parts of you that may be kinked, and I'll go over that. Trauma, toxins, negative thinking all have a kink on your garden hose. You with me? Trauma, toxins, negative thinking make your brain, make your body, make your life go from a green grass state to a brown grass state. And if we don't deal with the trauma and the toxins and the stinking thinking in your life, then your body will naturally, just like brown, just like brown grass, will go to dead grass or to dead brain where you don't know your wife anymore and you're mad and you're belligerent to her. A woman you've been married to for 50 years. Doesn't make sense. Pastors who are great Christian men now are cussing and doing things because they're out of their mind, right? And wouldn't the devil love nothing more than that or evil for that to happen to our bodies? Again, we're, we're here to be created to be strong and healthy. So the whole point I want you to understand now with your sheet is that you're supposed to be here healthy, fully strong every day of your life. I don't care how many years that is, but every day of your life, this should be you. This should be you every day of your life. And if not, maybe you don't have a vision or you don't see that yet. I'm going to help you get there. Okay? But boy, you can tell me right now you're in a brown grass zone. And again, <clears throat> negative 10 means you're dead. Positive 10, oh, I chopped my zero off. Positive 10 means almost ready for healthy and strong and ready to go. But zero, zero just means you feel fine, you're on no medication. So where are you at on a scale of positive 10 to negative 10? Zero just means I'm, I feel fine and I'm on no medication. I must be good. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So to understand, if you're in brown grass, what does that mean? That means your health, your health is failing you. That you're, it's not God's plan for your life. Your potential is being limited. You're losing health. You're making disease. So you're making Alzheimer's right now while you feel fine. You're making dementia right now while you feel fine. You're making Parkinson's right now while you feel fine. You're making depression. You're making the brain fog. You feel fine, but you don't know you're three Big Macs away from being there. Or three days of depression from being there. Or one more day of Red Bull from being there. Or one more day in front of the computer missing your adjustments from being there. Okay? And then here's the thing. If you or anyone you know has infertility or autism or ADHD, they got nerves being pinched on their garden hose, on their spine, nerve system. They got issues with trauma, toxins, and negative thinking, and they need to be in here getting it fixed. Gut issues, headaches, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, chronic pain, arthritis, depression, organ failure, obesity, all grows and happens in your body, not because God's mad at you, but because there's kinks on your hose due to trauma, specifically your nerve system, toxins, what you're drinking, eating, and not exercising, and stinking thinking. All of those over a long period of time and us being too busy to deal with, and we'll get to that someday when your health insurance kicks in, is why you're in the mess you're in. Does that make sense? Say Yahoo. Yahoo. Okay, very good. So, so, five early warning signs of a declining brain. You forget where you put things. Names, faces, important dates, and appointments, like your wife's birthday or something, okay? Very important. You have difficulty remembering conversations. You forget what you wanted to say mid-sentence. You stumble on words, suffering from lapses in concentration and being scatterbrained. You experience regular brain frog where you can't clearly think or your thoughts process slowed or murky. Now, here's the thing. If you're talking to someone, you go, wait a minute, I wasn't paying attention. There's a difference between that. <laughs> you can have that because you're not paying attention, okay? My wife will ask me a question, and I heard, her, I heard her audibly, but I didn't understand her. And I'll go, please ask me again. Okay. And I can respond, right? I'm not going to ignore her for Pete's sakes. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but that can be a sign that your brain is being affected from spinal trauma, from way too many toxins, 
and, and, and negative thinking, okay? So let's talk about brainstem trauma. Everybody say brainstem trauma. Brainstem trauma. So A, the birth process. Raise your hand if you've been through the birth process. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Tell me your name. Do you remind me of something cool? Tell me what's your name? Dave. Dave. Dave did a really cool thing. If you see a slide you like, pull up your phone, shh, take a picture of it. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool, right? It's like, wait, I didn't get it all. Right? Okay. So again, how many of these have you been through? And how long has it been since you've had it even looked at, right? Birth process, learning to walk, riding a bike, falls, sitting too long, playing sports, computer posture, television posture, video gaming posture, sleeping posture, auto accidents, motorcycles, surgery, organs. How many people have had that? So here's the problem, okay? This is your brain. This is your spine. Your brain attaches to your spine at an area called your brain stem. This is the talk I did for the NFL Alumni Association. This is my concussion talk. The problem is, is that when your head goes forward or when you're sitting like this or when you're born, the doctor pulls too hard on your head, look what happens to your brain stem, which is right here. The knot of the balloon is the brain stem. So when the doctor pulls you out, look what's happening to your brain stem. And your spine should have nice curves like this. When your head goes forward, the problem with that is right here is it's sucking the brain into the spinal canal. That's why forward head posture has an issue. Because if I put a stretch on your brain stem, and now you spend the next 20, 30 years walking around like that, tell me why your brain's not doing very well talking to your body. Tell me why I get hit in the head playing football, I don't recover because they're all MRIing this and they're doing nothing to change the tension off the spine. You change the tension off the spine, the brain flushes and you remember who you are again, Jim McMahon. So a lot of the problems are because of the brainstem trauma that happens when you live these normal parts of life. You're not going to avoid falling down. You're not going to avoid being born. You're not going to avoid a lot of these things, but you have to undo whatever trauma was created in the process. That makes sense? So many of you, when you get adjusted, this is what we're doing. Boom. Oh, wow. My brain is like alive now. What'd you do? Just took tension off the brain stem. We measure it too on you. We, want it, we don't want this because we see it doing that. Okay? Let me show you the birth process. Mom and dad get together. Can everybody see this? This is new. This is my brain process. So here's the birth process. Or not the birth process. This is the uh, conception. Ready? Don't miss it. Mom and dad get together. Sperm and egg unite. God blows on it. And all of a sudden, boop. Power comes on. And then in nine months, the brain starts talking to everything. And there you are. Power's on. Your brain is now talking to everything, right? Now the goal is when the three T's happen to you, trauma, toxins, negative thinking, is to know how to combat that and overcome that so that stress doesn't do that to you. Okay? When, you, when you're born like this and your head goes forward, then it has that effect on you. If you're like this and you have a bunch of, you have a big bowl of fruity pebbles for breakfast, that just happened to you. If you're sitting all day in the computer and you don't have time to exercise, that happens to you. That's, what, that's the effect on that, okay? That's the effect. So. Concussion. Three million concussions a year in America. 58% of all emergency departments visits and children 8 to 13 years old. Okay, and 46 from 14 to 19 years old. Concussion, kids are falling. Is it an issue, yes or yes? Yes. yes. Right, how many of the kids are going to get their spine turned back on, their brain stem turned back on, and their power turned back on? Not very many yet. One concussion, you're 1.5 times likely to have another one. Those who have had two are nearly three times greater risk. Those that three or more, three points. So it keeps getting, now here's the problem. The concussion does this. Spine goes forward. They treat the brain. 
but they never, but the spine continues to go untreated. So even when you're cleared of concussion protocols, because your spine's already like this, that's why you're three times likely to have another concussion because they never fixed the brain stem. They never fixed the problem. Mm. The longer you live with this, whether you quit playing football or not, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you shut down. You don't even know who you are. That's why concussions are, are an issue. Anybody who hears, let me just say, anybody you've heard has a concussion, no matter how old they are, get them in here. I, I even want to forget chiropractic for low back pain. I just want to become the concussion chiropractor. You got concussion, concussion, you got concussion, because concuss con that's why I spoke at the NFL Alumni Association, because the results we've had across the country, us and other offices, with NFL players who had concussion protocols, right? But then they got adjusted, and they started getting better. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is amazing. Everybody should, should be doing this, right? Again, a concussion can be a blow to the head, or it can be a whiplash, where your head doesn't hit anything, but your, your head gets whacked. And the problem is the reason why you can't go back in to do something again is because if you get a second time, then because the, your brain's already bleeding, it's already in trouble, then that second impact is what drops and you don't wake up. That's why you can't go back in. And again, concussion is a... Met the reason why I go over this thing is because concussion is not just a blow to the head, it's a metabolic disturbance in your body. So which means that if you're already playing football and you have a trauma... But then you're sucking down the Red Bull, the monster drink, all the crap to improve your performance. You're toxic. Then you got your coach yelling in your ear going, you're an idiot, get out there and play, hit somebody or I'm going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now you're out there in the field and you got all three traumas and the games are still at halftime. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's why it's a metabolic breakdown. It's a brain physiology shutdown. Trauma, toxins. And then stinking thinking just shuts us down more because after you let the brain to calm down, you're still being affected from the trauma, the toxins, and the negative thinking because you can't even think anymore. It hurts to look at a TV or even read a screen. That's why. And then you have a communication breakdown in your body. And again, if you, again, athletes will report, I have a, have a headache, I have vomiting, I have balance issues, I have blurry vision, sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise, feeling sluggish, hazy or foggy or groggy, concentration or memory problems, confusion, does not feel right or is feeling down. Not an athlete after concussion. But what about a 65-year-old man or woman who gets up and feels like that every day? One is a hit from football or uh, women's soccer is the number one leading cause of concussion in women, soccer. Okay. Um, yeah. So you don't have to be an athlete to have that. So could, the concussion can be one big blow, or it can be a little blow every day, sitting in front of the computer like this, doing your crappy macchiato, <laughs> depressed because no one cares about you, day after day after day after day after day. And again, head tilt and spinal pressure. This is from St. Mark's Hospital. They even get it, right? Can you see that? So if you're like this, what are you doing? Nothing. How many times you're in this position a day? And what can you do about it? Again, trauma. It's a slow death. It's a slow fade. Toxins, poisons, pollutions. Everybody say toxins. Toxins. So trauma of the brainstem is one of the ways that gives you Alzheimer's, makes you grumpy, moody, and gives you, uh, can't gain, you, you gain weight, not lose weight. Air you breathe, water, cookware, cleaning supplies, soap, shampoos, perfume, lack of oxygen, vitamins, electromagnetic, that's your cell phone and computers. Food, vaccines, medications. And again, how many of those things are you touching in a day? And for how long have you been touching it? it has a direct negative effect, impact on your brain. It's not life-giving to your brain. So, the 10 biggest brain damaging habits. First of all, no breakfast. No breakfast. Number two, overreacting. <laughs> Someone says, I love you. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're just saying that. Smoking. Some of you have smoked for a very long time. And I'm here to tell you, whatever got you started is no longer around, therefore you can quit. You smoked for a reason, to help fix something in your life, and that thing hasn't been around for 20 years, so why are we still smoking? You can stop. You can stop. So, sugar. 
you know, we always look for the hard step, the hard fix, right? We always think getting healthy or achieving a goal or something is like this long marathon. It's really not. It's doing a few things right every day and enjoying the benefits of it. Whether it's studying for an exam, whether it's raising a child, whether it's successful marriage, well, it's not rocket science, but it's deciding every day to make it important and to live as if this is your last day. Look at these cute little guys, so sweet and delicious. You just want to eat them up, right? That's the problem. We consume so much sugar these days that it's killing us. Seriously. You see, sugar is everywhere. It's in all the usual suspects, but you might not realize that it's in a lot of other foods. Did you know that our daily intake averages 95 grams? That might not sound like a lot, but it adds up to 77 pounds of added sugar every year. Now look at the American Heart Association's daily recommendations. It's no wonder one in three adults and one in five kids are obese. It's not just because sugar tastes good, it's, it's also, also addictive. addictive. Consuming it, even thinking about it, causes a euphoric effect that triggers the production of dopamine in your brain, a neurotransmitter that controls pleasure and is responsible for reward-motivated behavior. Studies show sugar is as addictive as alcohol or cocaine, and it's hard to avoid. There are about 600,000 different packaged food items in grocery stores today, and 80% of them contain added sugars. But what we drink could be our biggest problem. Guzzle just one of these beverages, and you've more than filled your daily recommended sugar allowance. It's tricky. Did you know that food manufacturers use more than 30 different names for the most common sugars? So what's the problem? Well, sugars are carbohydrates that are roughly half glucose and half fructose. Consuming glucose makes your pancreas secrete a hormone called insulin, which, among other things, causes your body to store fat. Your liver deals with the fructose, but you can't do it in the quantities that many of us consume today. It releases some of it as fat, but most of that backs up in your liver cells. Now you've got a condition called insulin resistance. You're secreting more and more insulin in response to all the carbs in your diet and even the proteins. The result? You get fatter, and you get fatty buildup in your now inflamed arteries. You're what some doctors call metabolically disturbed. Your body can no longer regulate itself. Eventually, it will kill you. Along the way, your pancreas might give out and you'll become diabetic. And there's reason to believe that metabolic disturbances cause high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, and, of course, obesity. Now, well, the good news is that there are five simple things you can do to avoid and reverse the damage. Number one, avoid sugary drinks. All that glucose and fructose literally is an assault on your system. Give tea or carbonated water a try, something besides processed sugar water. Why drink all your calories? Number two, read labels carefully. Yeah, processed foods are convenient, but often they're loaded with sugar and provide little nutrition. Number three, exercise a little. It may not seem like much, but a daily half-hour walk helps reduce stress and control your blood sugar and cravings. Number four, don't trust processed low-fat foods. Guess what? The missing fat is usually replaced by salt and sugar, and your body just converts the added sugar into fat after you eat. And number five, eat more fiber. Try to eat at least 25 to 30 grams of fiber every day. Fiber-rich foods typically are high in vitamins and antioxidants and keep you feeling full longer. Hey, it just comes down to making smarter choices. The foods you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. So sugar, again, affects the brain. It can rewire your brain's pathways. Diets full of processed sugar, heavy foods can increase the risk of depression by 58%. So if you tell me to bet on something and there's a 58% chance of success, hey, I'll, I'll take those odds, right? Okay? 
So sugar has an effect. So we saw how a concussion can cause trauma to the brain and body. But as far as mood swings and gaining weight, it's all based on what we put in our mouth. It's not the person you live with's problem. It's not the kids. It's not the family. It's not everybody else. It's us that's making us be more susceptible to that stress. But it, sugar attacks your heart and your skin and your, your, your male and female organs and your joints and kidneys. I'm going to talk about on January 20th the whole infertility issue thing, okay, and how to solutions to fix that that are safe and natural, not give you cancer. Again, diet soda. Why are you told to drink this? To do what? To lose weight. You want to lose weight because your life will be happy if you lose weight. So if we tell them, hey, let's sell them this, and they'll buy it in hopes of losing weight, you've been lied to. But when you put that in your body by God, a, a product made by man, made with chemicals, again, so now is this Diet Coke natural or is it toxic? Is it going to have a healing effect on your brain or a, a negative effect on your brain? Negative. Now, does anybody just drink one of these? That's the problem. If, you, if you've never had one and you go out and drink one, are you going to die? No. Are you going to have multiple sclerosis? No. Are you going to have dementia and Alzheimer's? No. Are you going to gain weight? No. You had one. Probably wouldn't even finish it. I don't know. Ugh. Right? But if you had one a day, guess what? Eventually you'll have two a day. Then you may have to having three a day. You know why? Because it's addictive. It's got fake sugar in it made by man, which now causes an increase in cancer, increase in heart attack and stroke, makes you gain weight, and, it's very acid and it eats away at your bones and teeth. But what are you told? See, there's the problem with life right there. Is you, you're told that this is good for you when it actually delivers you to the very place you don't want to be. Okay. So aspartame, that's the pink pack, that's the blue pack, that's the yellow pack that you were told many years ago is better than sugar. So you man-made sugar. Well, when you put that in your body over a period of time, it has a debilitating brown grass effect on you and a dead grass effect on you because it makes you lose your memory, it hurts your DNA, you have depression, brain damage, vision problems, brain tumors, and insomnia. And is it deadly? It just, just that alone, yes. They want us to minimize, oh, no big deal, it's okay. I'm telling you, yes, it's that deadly. It's that dangerous to your brain, okay? Just give one kid, give a five-year-old a can of Coca-Cola and watch them afterwards and tell me one doesn't matter, right? Okay? Right. Now, also, there's things you have to watch out that are toxins. Everybody say toxins. Toxins. That are in your everyday life that can shut your brain down, make you gain weight, make you moody, make you have sugar cravings and make you have Alzheimer's or dementia or Parkinson's, right? And not allow you to recover from the concussions you've had in your life. Heavy metals. Now, this is not Van Halen. This is not Sammy Hagar, right? This is, this is mercury in your teeth. This is vaccines with mercury, with toxins in them, medications. Uh, this can be your asbestos. MSG can cause Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and brain other issues. Artificial sweeteners, which I just talked about, including anxiety attacks, slurred speech, depression, migraines, fluoride, which can be in your water, IQ levels in humans, learning, memory impairment, fetal brain damage, and altered neural behavior function. Now, this is so bad that most of this is not allowed in other countries. Yeah. But it's allowed in America. The bummer is, where do we live? In America, where they still allow this in the food, in the water, in the environment, in the vaccines, in the medication. So that's what we have to be careful of. And again, Ritalin. If I'm a brown grass teenager or a child not doing well in school because I have trauma from birth and from living life, I have toxins and I have negative thinking, right? What I wanted to do is I wanted to hold up a maximized living uh, a Bible, okay, or a book, and a people's magazine. And the problem is, which one do you believe in you need to be like? Everything in People's Magazine or The Inquirer or The Cell or what God says about you. I just choose to believe what God says about me, not what People Magazine says about me yeah. or Facebook or the Internet, anything else like that. Or your friends. Grant got upset because somebody disagreed him on Facebook. I'm like, what do you expect? You're, 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 you, you look at life through God's vision and through heaven and you're an honoring person. Of course they're not going to agree with you. What do you expect? What do you expect? You know? So, again, that's important. 
And again, Ritalin is a class two narcotic. Yeah. So is cocaine. Every, in, in the top two side effects is homicide, homicide and suicide behavior. And yet we're giving this to our children, foster kids, court ordered. To our 10, 5, 10, to 15, 16 year olds. And you wonder why the world's going crazy? You wonder why they're walking into schools and shooting people? Because we're using that to treat a brown grass teenager. We make them more toxic. They can't think right. They're already with trauma like this and they pull a gun and want to shoot somebody, they're just acting out what's going on on the inside and the side effect of the medication. Bring those kids in here. We'll turn, we, have one, we have one individual, I won't say his name. I donate, I donate my care to foster kids. We have a special patient who, who takes, she has these boys, she, it's called the Bad Boys Club, and she loves them. And I said, if you can get the court to say it's okay, they're not even allowed to come in here and get healthy. But we had one gentleman come in. He's been coming the last three weeks. He, he, he broke the record at the school he went to in graduating from high school. I said, what's your favorite uh, class? He says, physics. I'm like, oh, we can talk physics all day long because that's all I do when I adjust you is all about physics. You know, he loves to ride, ride his BMX bike and come up with new tricks to crash and do things with. So, I mean, that's his life. But again, where's, where are those kids going to come to get better so that when they're, how's life when they're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old? in prison. Why? Because that's what we're doing to them now. It's all about habits and behaviors. And again, I'm sorry, but who are they really? God created them in whose image? Right? Okay. So, so depression. Again, effects are antidepressants increase risk of suicide thinking and behavior. It's not approved for the use of pediatric patients. And yet, who are they giving it to? It's right there. Toxin. That's why it's, an it, it's a toxin and it destroys the brain. You destroy the brain, you can't control yourself, and you act out in ways that are not godly, that are evil, because that's what you're turning your brain into. And again, trans fats, fats do matter. When you, when you, when you see hydrogenated fats, or partially hydrogenated fats, or all the foods you see on the grocery aisle have a shelf life longer than 30 days, those are bad fats, and those bad fats have a direct effect on your brain. Your brain is 65% fat. So you got to feed it fat or it'll shut down. The problem with stratera, uh, uh, statin drugs, the problem is I've got so many things to say. <laughs> and I tried to say it at one time. <laughs> and my brain can't keep up. <laughs> when you take cholesterol medication, it robs the amyloids out of your brain and shuts you down. So long-term statin drugs, long-term cholesterol medication is one of the leading causes of um, type 2 diabetes, and when you have type 2 diabetes, you're four times greater to have Alzheimer's. Welcome to America. We'll make you toxic, and the government will pay for it for you. You don't have to worry about it. The problem is that obesity does not run in your family. The problem is that nobody runs in your family. So we talked about what you put in your mouth, how it can be toxic to you, but what about what you do with your body, meaning you sit all day and don't do anything called exercise because you don't have time for that, right? That lack of oxygen has a toxic effect on your brain as well, okay? The, thing, the, the, the problem with sugar addiction is it messes with your dopamine. So more sugar, more dopamine rush. More sugar, more dopamine pleasure. Well, guess what? When you exercise, it does the same thing for the brain, but in a healthy way, you get healthy dopamine hormones so, so that you can literally do well for your body by exercising and undoing the brain chemistry from the sugar addiction, from the mood issues, from that you can, de it detoxes your brain and your body from, from everything you're supposed to be doing. And again, one of the problems with toxins and lack of oxygen is it makes your cortisol go up. Everybody say cortisol. Cortisol. Come January 20th, we'll do a whole other seven hours on that, okay? <laughs> Why can't I get pregnant? Why is my thyroid going crazy? Why are my adrenals shutting down? Why am I gaining weight and not able to lose it? Why am I moody? Why is my testosterone levels off in men? Cortisol, right there. We're toxic. We have trauma. We're not exercising. We're not moving. It makes us more toxic. We think it's going to come from a magic pill to fix us, which makes us more toxic. And then over time... Our cortisol levels get jacked up, 
and depression, hyper, heart issues, chronic fatigue, sleep, migraines, tunnel vision, stomach, mood, hostility, <coughs> hunger, arthritis, decreased immune system, decreased metabolism, all because of that one hormone. That one hormone there. You know how you fix it? Oh, you don't want to know this one. Get adjusted. Stop eating so much sugar. Okay? Exercise. Here's the last one. Here's the hardest one. You have to forgive the person you're most mad at. Gratitude. Gratitude. 15 minutes of gratitude will balance your hormones faster than anything out there. Isn't that ironic? Gratitude. But when I read this thing, it's right in line with what this says about how to be healthy. Forgiveness. Gratitude. Don't go to bed angry. I'm just call me crazy. So wrong thinking. I've got bad genes. It's too late for me. I'm like, I can't do this. I wouldn't know where to start. Don't get your hopes up. You ever have those people in your life? I know none of you say that, right? Yeah. Somebody has a dream, a vision. Oh, don't get your hopes up, man. Yeah, I don't know. You couldn't do that. Uh-huh. Never been working before. That's why I don't go back to Michigan very often. <laughs> it can't be that simple. Life is hard. I'm not sure my body can heal that. And, and, and be careful because being around people with no hope is very contagious. Yeah. Very contagious. You know, I sit up here and I talk. And this is another free one. I talk. I love you guys. I'm myself, right? I'm myself. When I got up to talk in front of the people I send Christmas cards to, like, like my cousins and stuff, I'm like, oh. They've never heard me before. They've never heard, I mean, they say they watch the videos, but I doubt it. But I'm like, and God's like, stop thinking. Just do like you, like, just tell it, just do what I tell you to do. And, and, I, and I delivered it. I didn't bring the green hose, I didn't bring the, the, the garden hose out. My kids thought I was going to bring the garden hose out, though. <laughs> but it was like, ah, because I'm like, these folks have never heard this. You get to hear it, and I feel more comfortable here, but it was like, oh. Don't screw this one up. These, keep, these people, you know. So, but it was, it was weird. It was a weird feeling. Uh, I never get nervous, but I was nervous that day. It was, we had a good time. It was fun. We honored my Aunt Bonnie. It was really good. Um, I wore a Browns jersey because she loved the Cleveland Browns. And they had plenty of them in stock anyway, so. So do you know that stress can kill you? Stress can kill you. It can. It can. It messes your hormones up. Cortisol. And it sets your whole, because again, your brain just says, whatever you want, you get. You want to be stressed out? Fine. So you do it, we do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves. And sometimes prolonged stress can lead to anxiety, depression, poor decision making, insomnia, memory loss, right? Stress can literally cause your brain to shrink. And that's, that's harmful as it does sound. Stress damages your brain-body connection. But the good news is that proper sleep, diet, exercise, prayer, meditation, nervous system checkups reduce stress. What a concept. So may I be so silly to say if you make this part of your daily routine that you're going to be a whole... You can't avoid stress. You can't avoid you know who, right? They're family. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> but if you do this on a regular basis, then you're able to adapt to what's going on, right? Here's the situation. On 60 day weather, my grass is really good. But on 100 degree weather, if I don't water it, that stress is gonna cause it to wilt. But as long as I water my grass like I should, whether it's 60 degrees out, 30 degrees out, or 120 degrees out, my grass will stay green. It can weather the storm, but I have to feed it and give it what it needs. The same thing is for you. The same thing is for you. So again, anger weakens your liver. Grief weakens your lungs. Worry weakens your stomach. Stress weakens your heart and brain. Fear weakens your kidneys. So if I have anybody who has kidney issues and they're going towards dialysis, I'm going to ask them, what are you afraid of? We have to work that. I have to adjust the nerves to the kidney. I have to get their diet better. I have to get them exercising. But then I'm going to say, is there anything you're afraid about? Why don't you go home and write it down? Because writing stuff down works, doesn't it, Diana? Writes it, yeah. Become aware of that. Oh. I did have that fear. That couldn't be it. Let's, let's get rid of it and let's see what happens, right? Love brings peace and harmony and strengthens your mind and body. That's why some of you, I'm really worried about the Broncos this year for you, okay? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of depression going on. Oh, yeah. 
Laughter, re see, but laughter reduces stress and smile spreads happiness. Ergo, my silly dad jokes. I know they're dumb, but I laugh at them and it's for me, so it's okay, all right? <laughs> it's good, it's good. But that's where it's, so, so peace and joy and love can make you better or stress and bitterness can make you there. So angry, anger is just an inefficient emotion to have, so why have it? Have peace. Really get back at somebody by showing them it doesn't really bother what they do, what they do to you. Whatever. Whatever. I don't care. Fine. I choose, I choose to hold on to my peace. I choose to hold on to my joy. I fight to hold on to my peace. I fight to hold on to my joy. I fight to say I love you no matter what you say back to me. It's my choice. It's my choice. It's my choice. They didn't make you do anything. So now look at this page here because this shows you how to live to make your brain better, make your, better, your brain strong. I call these the six habits of life. And again, to keep us from being overtaken by the three T's, this is a different way to prevent and confront sickness, suffering, and early death. You have six choices how to live your life. Five will, will be there for you to build yourself up. One is there only when you have emergencies and nothing else is working. Okay? That's what we look at. So what if every time your body, your brain shuts you down because of trauma, because of toxins, and because of negative thinking. You exhibited a healthcare condition, a pain, a depression. Physically or emotionally, you're not happy or something's wrong. You have pain, right? Make sense? What caused that pain? Years or months of trauma, toxins, and stinking thinking. Does that make sense? You're in brown grass. Why? Because you've kinked your spine, you, you've eaten or you've done things toxic, make yourself toxic, and you don't think well about yourself. That, that's why you hurt. That's why it's not going away. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But then you say, oh no, I'm in trouble. I'm going to go to the medical help only box. Well, when you go there, what do they give you? They give you medication. Is medication toxic or natural? Again, I'm not saying right or wrong, but you have a toxic problem. Your body's warning you of that. And hopefully you're going to get, take so much toxins that it shuts it off. It suppresses it. Or they're going to give you a shot to suppress that warning light, right? Or they're going to cut something out. Is that going to turn the power back on in the brain, in the body? Does it make the problem better or worse? Worse. Now, if it's an emergency problem, like, okay, I broke my knee or my wife's organs go to the wrong zip code because she had four big babies and we have to have... They're, I'm not saying I'm anti-drugs and surgery. But you got to understand, they use drugs and surgery to fix you, which means they put more toxins in you. So now we got, even got more detoxing and more work to do to get you back to health. Surgery alone is not going to... You're still brown grass. Medication alone, you're still brown grass, right? You still have to work on being on the offensive to get your life back to green grass. Even if you're on medication, you can get back to green grass, okay? Some of you may need it. Type 1 diabetic, seizures, I don't know. Your body can wall off of that and say, I'm fine. The medication's okay. It's not having an effect right now, okay? I muscle tested my dad. He was on 19 medications he let me test him on. Don't go there. But I said, okay, dad, if you'll leave these nine out, I may get in trouble for saying this. This is my dad. I knew his family. I said, these nine aren't your friend. These ten your body says it still benefits from, okay, along with nutrition. You do what you want to do. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't play one on TV. But if it was me, that's what I would do, okay? It's up to him. So I'm not anti-medication, right? I'm just saying, I don't care what you do. You better be dealing with the trauma and detoxing and working on your thinking every day if you want to have a good life and fun life and peaceful life, okay? But if we're only running here and we're ignoring all the other five areas, especially the brain and nerves, you're never going to succeed. You won't get the green grass. Sorry, it just doesn't happen that way. Therefore, why there is more cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, nursing homes filling up with people because for the last... 100 years, we're taught on TV and videos and everything else in General Hospital that whenever you have a problem, a burp, an ache, or a fart, run here. <laughs> they make you being pregnant, not a natural thing of God, but a medical condition. They just changed all the blood pressure rules, 
right? They changed the numbers. So that means that now 20% of the country automatically now has high blood pressure. So what do they got to do? Well, you better go here and get your medication then. You were fine yesterday. Oh, no, not today. You got heart disease now. And again, what do we have to show for only running to this as a lifestyle? We have younger family members now footing the bill, $7,600 to $15,000 a month to, be, to go live when your brain shuts down on you. A month. Cash, check, or charge. And if not, then we take your, your house. Then we take everything. Because you lifestyled yourself into that nursing home. No one made you go there. You believed that Diet Coke was good for you, that you could lose weight, and you kept drinking it in the hopes that someday that scale would move a little bit. In the meantime, you forgot who you were, you forgot even about the weight, and now you're in the nursing home after lifetime uses of Diet Coke, of drinking the Crappuccinos, of microwaving your food. If you're 65 years old, you have a one in eight chance of suffering from significant cognitive decline. If you live in America especially. This says you should never have a chance of cognitive decline, but since living in America right now, if you're not listening to this, watching this tape today, video today, you have a one-eight chance. If by the time you're 80, for those of you who are my Bible friends, what age was Caleb when he went and kicked everybody's butt on the mountain? 80. So when I turn 80, I may not be here anymore. I'm going to go in the jungle and play Tarzan. That's why my hair's long, okay? <laughs> I'm just getting ready. So if you're 80, you have a one in two chance if you'll suffer from Alzheimer's disease or some other dementia. Wow. Now, don't spit on your friend, but everybody go <laughs> to that. Good. That's just some man's opinion. That doesn't have to happen. You don't have to be there. Let somebody else be that one. You be the two, all right? <laughs> you be on the eight side. Don't be the one. But it's how you live that dictates that. Not man. Not Walgreens, nobody. Now, would the people who create Alzheimer's medication like you to believe that? Yeah, because yeah, they got more medication to sell you. Yeah. Which makes the med which make uh, Alzheimer's medication makes you worse, by the way. I, I don't have more time for that, but it makes you worse. Yeah. So again, our goal is to get you from green grass, back from brown grass, dead grass, back to green grass. That's what it's all about. Everybody say neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. It takes 21 days. Right now, your brain is patterned a certain way, okay? If I say someone's name, you have a pattern, ugh, right? Well, you know, now, if you meet them, you go, oh, they're not so bad. Your pattern changes. Your, and then the more you reinforce that, the pattern changes. So your brain is all patterned. Trauma, toxins, stinking thinking, the way you live your life is how it is today on Saturday. If you choose to kick the sugar addiction, and get yourself healthy and change everything, now you're changing the new pattern to a healthy pattern. And after 21 days, your brain will lay down new pathways and the old pathways will die off because you're not using them anymore. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's how you overcome being overweight, sugar addiction, stinking thinking. You're not going to go home tomorrow and wake up going, glory, hallelujah. Now you might. We could just, like my ankle, whack it all. It can happen that way. Fine. But then every day you have to believe, my ankle's healed, my ankle's healed, I'm better, I'm not going back. You have to believe that, you have to choose that, you have to claim that, you have to yeah. steward that every day. Because if I said, oh no, it's, that, was, that was a mistake, it must have been da, 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 da. Okay, again, I like patterns and I like principles, right? There was a man that was blind, Jesus put mud on his eyes, and he healed his eyes. He goes home and says, mom and dad, my eyes are healed. And they go, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> We're taking you to the local church. And the local church yelled at him, you can't be healed, you're supposed to be blind. What happened? I met this man named Jesus, do you know him? Yeah, but he's a sinner, he's, a, he's evil. How can he heal you? So the point is, the man got healed, and no one in his family, or at work, or his church, were happy for him. Yet he's healed, so guess what? He has a choice. Go back to being blind and make everybody happy? <laughs> Or find a whole new set of friends and say, screw you guys, I'm out of here. I could, yeah. All I know is I was blind, and now I can see, and now I can see I need new friends. Yeah. Now I can see I need, need a new family, and now I can see I need a new church. Sorry, yeah. but I'm leaving, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are we having fun today? Yeah. Okay, this is still the introduction. I haven't got started yet. <laughs> so you can change. You can change. So again, brainstem trauma. Again, 
And the reason why I don't talk about the brain because I'm a chiropractor, I talk about the brain because I'm a scientist. I've spent 30 years, I've spent over 5,000 hours in school, but then I've spent 30 years learning that it is from the brain. If I hurt the brain, everything shuts down. Good luck trying to heal anything else. Good luck cha changing your diet doesn't work. Positive motivation doesn't work if your brain's not working like it's supposed to, right? You can put fertilizer on the grass all day long. You can do anything you want to do. But if you don't water it, good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. So your nerve system, you know, it runs everything. Then food, okay, but then water. But then, so nerve system is important. Then air, then water, then food. So if I'm going to fix you, if I'm going to help you, then we need to start with the nerve system first. That's why the brain and spine and nerves are in the center. If you want success at living live this thing called life, that's why I put the brain, spine, and nerves in the middle. You got to start there first. A lot of people eating organic, exercising, detoxing, and still ending up in a nursing home with Alzheimer's, praying, pastors going to church, living life. They never checked, they never were told about their nerve system and the brain power to keep it going. So, how does this happen? Again, birth process. We've all been there, right? Forceps, vacuum extraction, yanked out, right? This is it, right here. And then we live the rest of our life like this and no one corrects it. Why? Well, why would you ever take a chiropractor, baby, to a chiropractor? Right? I don't know. I was blind and now I see. Oh, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, right? Again, it's not science saying it, it's public opinion. And again, this is how it should be. This is your atlas right here. Your atlas surrounds the brainstem right here. If it gets kinked, then it kinks the brainstem. Right there. Look at somebody, head tilted to the left. Guess what? They're kinked. Their body's making disease. They're brown grass. It's right there. It's right there. Throws it all off. Does it matter? Well, yeah, because when you kink that, that's your nerve supply to your heart, lungs, stomach, your eyes, your movement, your brain fog, your hormones, your dizziness, lightheadedness, energy, increased pain, immune system. Just one bone pinching on one nerve. When that nerve can't do its job, you get all those things happening. It's one nerve. Your brain has the power. It tells the nerves how to take care of you. If your, if your spine shifts out of alignment, then it can't tell it what to do, and your nerves will shut you down. You kink the hose, the grass will shut down. Ask Christopher Reeves. What did he break? That one area right there. He didn't break his arm. He didn't break his leg because his body wouldn't have shut down then. And how do we fix it then? Do we detox him? Do we, do we, do we uh, get him to say his declarations? Do we give him push-ups to do? No, first thing we're going to do, we're going to do this, take the pressure off his brainstem, then we're going to pray and let God's healing power come to his body, then we'll do all that other stuff, but we got to take care of this first. Take care of that first. And again, so if you have a nerve in trouble, that could cause eye problems. If nerves being pinched, they can't do their job, that can affect your nose, your glands, your heart, your lungs, your stomach, your blood vessels, your liver, your pancreas, your adrenals, your small intestine, your large intestines, go in the bathroom, your kidneys, bladder, sex organs, all those work because nerves carry brain messages to them. If the nerve gets pinched, then they can't work right. So what can I help? Only everything your brain talks to. That's it. I can only help whatever your brain goes to. If your brain doesn't go to it, I can't help it. Okay? So... But as I just simply remove the pressure off that nerve system, then we get your brain power back on. It floods those nerves and all those organs now begin to regenerate the way God said he made them in his image. Okay? So again, Dr. Windsor, same thing too. He did autopsies on people and he found that the trauma to the nerves that go to the heart is why they had heart disease. 26 times. 26 times lung disease. 9 times stomach disease. Liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, kidney, prostate, uterus. Again, these organs are supposed to last 120 years of full strength and healing. That's the promise. But if you, can't, if you have trauma on the nerve system, trauma on the spine, trauma on the nerves, the brain can't talk to them. And therefore, you can't control them. Therefore, they have to go from green grass to brown grass to dead grass. Does that make sense? That's why you come get adjusted. Because you want to get the pressure off this nerve system. Keep your brain going every day as much as you can. And again, this is the brain, right? Part of your brain, frontal, behavior, intelligence, memory, movement, parietal, thank you, intelligence, language, reading, sensation, vision, occipital, vision, processing, spatial orientation, right? Cellar bellum, spatial orientation, that's when you go to church and move your chair over because you don't want to sit too close to people, okay? 
I got an occipital stuck right here. Uh, cerebellum is balance, swallowing, breathing, heartbeat. Temporal, speech, vision, hearing, long-term memory. Are those important functions that you need every day? And if your brain shuts down, what happens to them? <coughs> but don't we have a medication for that? Or a shot, or a surgery, or a procedure? Or God must be mad at you. We blame everything else. We realize, do you have any trauma on your nerve system? Did you go through the birth process? Have you ever gotten that checked? Are you eating toxins right now? Are you, you know, I don't know. Just one. I just had one donut. Are you, do you have any harbor hard feelings towards your parents, your father, mother? No, I just hate them, that's all. <laughs> you know, that makes this thing go sick. But here's the thing. Some of you don't understand this, but I'll try to help explain it. When you feel me clicking you on the side of the head with that adjusting tool, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. When you feel me go -da 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 up the left side of your body, that's making the right side of your brain light up. What's the right side of your brain do? Well, subjectivity, synthesizing, emotion, face recognition, music and art awareness, intuition, creativity, and imagination. You just want your back pain to go away, but all of that is coming with it. If I hit you on the right side, okay, <coughs> Then your language, objectivity, analytical skills, numbering skills, scientific skills, written language, logic, and reasoning all gets improved. Why did you hit me on the left? It doesn't hurt. Your right brain needed it. Why did you adjust me on the, on the right? Your left brain needed it. Why? I don't know why. Why did I limp in here one day and dance out the next? I don't care. All I know is I can dance now, right? <laughs> don't overthink it, which is one of the reasons to touch your brain down, overthinking, okay? So again, does your nervous system hold the key to your body's healing potential? Yep. Now you understand that, right? Now you understand that. So again, when I look at an x-ray or a spine, I want to see a good curve like this. I want to see a good curve because I know your body's making brown grass, a green grass, regardless of how you feel. If I see that on your x-ray at 45 degrees, I know, not guess, not hope, not depend on your insurance, I know the body that God gave you is working like it's supposed to. But if I x-ray you and I see your numbers less than 45 degrees in your neck like this or like that, then I know you're making disease. Regardless of how you feel, you're making the very thing you don't want. Regardless of how you feel, these nerves can't do their job, therefore your health is failing you. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. How do I know? That's how you're made. That's how you're made. And I know the longer you leave it that way, then your body goes from brown grass, where your health is failing, to phase two degeneration. That's 20. This is five to 10 years to get there. This is 20 years to get there. So 20 years of your nerves not doing their job is the reason why your organs have failed you. You have disease. Not because of you don't have enough toxins, medication in your body. Not because you haven't. It's because you haven't learned how to deal with the trauma or you're too busy to deal with the trauma. Get adjusted. Do your home exercises, work out. Ooh. Do you, so do your trauma, then you'll get to changing your diet someday. Then you st still don't believe what I'm saying really works, so therefore you're stuck here. That's phase two. Phase three is dead grass phase, health failure. That's what everybody's spine looks like in a nursing home right there. You ever see their posture? How's that hump in their back? Nice and tall, or? Isn't it ironic, all science says, the worse your, your hump on your back, your spine gets, the worse your brain, your body, organ failure gets. It's right there. It's the only consistent thing in the medical journals. Only consistent thing. Only consistent thing is the worse your spine gets, the worse your health gets, the worse your brain works. The better your spine gets, the better your brain works. The better your health. It's the only consistent thing you see in medical literature. Leeches. Are they still good? Actually, they are, actually still do work. How about smoking while you're pregnant? Right? All these medical things that they, they gave you opium and heroin back in the 20s. Bear, bear made it, right? Oh, we, we're wrong. This has been the one thing that's always delivered the promise of truth. That's why I'm a chiropractor. And that's why, I, where's, where's Grant at? I freaking love chiropractic, right? Okay. <laughs> so now, Jim McMahon, right? We all know who he is or was, or is. He's still alive, okay? Jim McMahon, he's a football player. Chicago Bears. So he was diagnosed with dementia. So here's a man who played football. He, had, he was diagnosed with dementia. He wasn't even, I think his 40s or 50s. Diagnosed with dementia, trouble speaking, vision issues, a whole other slew of different conditions. He was the poster boy for concussion and CTE and all that stuff, that movie. I don't even watch that movie with Will Smith called Concussion. 
I'm afraid to. Because I will come off the wall. I'll be like, it's right there, people. Okay? So just so watch this. So this is how a brain and spinal cord should be. Okay? This is his. Ergo, kink in the hose, right? That's not his brain. That's his spinal cord. What you're looking at right there on MRI is this. It's this. Okay? I know it's kind of simple, but this was like nothing. That costs a lot of money to practice that. Okay? So here, this is it. This is what you're looking at, right? And what it causes his brain to be full of, let's just call it crap, where he couldn't think. It's actually cerebral spinal fluid, but it's all full of stuff. He couldn't think. You put the pressure on the brain, and that shuts down. Uh, uh, you, that, that's what you get, right? This is his, after his adjustment, you'll see in a minute, where it flushed all that out because he took the kink off the hose right here. The problem isn't up there. This is the effect. The problem is right here. So, let's see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. While most concussion studies are focused on the brain, McMahon's team traces the effects of CTE directly to the upper spine, having found that neck misalignment can block the flow of spinal fluid and pull toxic proteins directly onto the brain. Spinal fluid is white. That's the spinal cord. This is the spinal column. What you're seeing is a narrowing of the opening where the spinal fluid is supposed to come through. Most times when you're having head problems, that's all they look at is the head. These guys are smart enough at least to look below the head at the neck and see if there was a problem somewhere, and they found my problem. They're not going to be able to reverse the damage. Like I said, that stuff was sitting in there for 20 years. So how much it ate away at my brain, I don't know. Using detailed images captured by the MRI scans, McMahon regularly receives targeted adjustments, clearing the blockage and restoring the flow of spinal fluid. This instrument is going to generate a gentle mechanical tapping that is just lightly going to put those bones right back into normal position. Okay, I'm going to sit back up. First time they did this procedure, within two minutes, it was like the toilet flush. I could feel this stuff actually leaving my brain. My eyes cleared up. My speech cleared up. The left is before, the right is after. So you see how much there is there? See how there's less in here? Instead of all this white stuff being there, you see more brain tissue than fluid. So it's already started to brain. Over the next several days, it'll improve more. That was the adjustment there. Did you, did you hear a click, a, a cracking sound at all? Did he twist it at all? Did the doctor measure? where he needed to adjust, apply the adjustment, and said, power's on. Has my adjusting changed the last few months? Yeah. Because I'm measuring. We've always measured, OK? I reserve the right to get better at turning that power on. Some of you are so stressed out that we can't make any popping sounds with you right now because you're so stressed out right now. But Every time you leave here, everything is back in place. I promise you. Whether I just did one click, or whether I turn your right and left, you don't get off that table until the power's on. Your legs are even. Your nervous system is balanced. Just like the gentleman did there. They measured the spine. They saw what the numbers were. That's not right. Based on those numbers, they made a corrective adjustment. Click on that time. It's called atlas orthogonal. Click. You don't even feel it. The problem is the public's not ready for something that light to do something that powerful. It's public perception. It's what it is, because it, it, it's that powerful, right? So when you, you lay down and I, I'm, I'm checking all that brain stuff, right side, left side, back, and click, 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 adjusting tool, or hug you. If I need to pull your head off, I'll pull your head off. <laughs> as long as it has that healing effect on you. <laughs> but I could try to pull your head off to make you happy, but it actually makes you unhealthy. It puts more of a kink in the hose, not a kink off the hose. All, again, as God watching me, and I'm not going to get hit by lightning, but if I, do, if I try to do something to make you happy and it makes him mad, I'm getting hit by lightning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, is that a good job? Good job. But they don't like it. Well, ask them. Is there anything else barking at you? You want me to touch? Yeah, I do. Okay, I'll touch it and I'll adjust it. I'm not here to kick you out and say, suck it up. But I'm just simply saying that little click change. He's no longer the poster child for... For NFL concussion protocols, he's back to living. His wife has her, her, his wife has her husband back. Yeah. And who get it for all the other stuff, right? 
That's why I'm a chiropractor. That's why I measure your spine. That's why you don't come in based on how you feel. You come in based on your spinal numbers. And I watch your spinal numbers when I re-x-ray you, making sure that that's happening to you because I don't want any of you ever end up in a nursing home. I don't want you any of you ever coming up with Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes. I want you all becoming the people that God dreamed you to be. That's my job. That's my responsibility. Again, okay, another quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. His dad's a chiropractor. Is he a pretty good player? He's pretty good, isn't he, right? Yeah, he's hurt right now, but again, it works for him. But what about Junior Seo? Commit suicide. Depression. Did he have brain stem injury? Yeah. Oh, they blame the brain, right? No, blame the spine. He wasn't getting adjusted. He was toxic from all the pain medication, the depression medication they were giving him. And what's the side effect of that toxic medication? Suicide. Suicide. Any Biggest Loser fans? Bob Harper? Okay. If diet and exercise alone and really cool tattoos was the way to be in green grass, then this guy was green grass. But he had a heart attack. Therefore, is the nerve going to his heart happy or sad? Is it being pinched? Over time, what's that caused the heart to do? To attack. So is he health? Is he green grass or brown grass? Look at him. He's brown grass. How do you know, Dr. Harvey? Because he had a heart attack. Somebody yesterday, uh, the other day said, yeah, my daughter, she had cancer, and, and, and then they said it was gone, but then it came back, so she's doing vitamin C therapy. She's healthy, but I'm like, no, she's not healthy. She's had cancer twice. She's a nice lady, doesn't deserve to have it, but she's not healthy. Let's just call it that, because she's not detoxing, she's not getting her brainstem adjusted, and she's probably, who knows what she's thinking, but if you're only dependent on vitamin C alone, you're not dealing with the trauma and you're, and you're not dealing with the emotional scars. I don't know. I don't want to go there. So again, birth trauma. So any children that have stress, what does brown grass look like in a baby? Eyes, colic, head tilt, pooping problems, right? I asked the baby, how are they pooping? Good, good, that's good. Okay, fussy, ear infections. Okay, and children, bedwetting, growing pains, asthma, not sleeping through the night, my tummy hurts. Some of you may say at 65 years old, my tummy always hurt when I was little. Yeah, so this is a 60-year-old issue we're trying to fix right now. See how long, why it shuts your brain down? Teenagers, oh, just give, them, just give them Ritalin. Give them a gun, right? Headaches, neck pain, menstrual issues, dizziness, frequent colds, fatigue. Oh, that's just part of life, suck it up. No, it's not. No, it's not. Let's bring them in here. Let's adjust them. Let's pray over them and tell them we believe in them. That's what we want to do. And then adults. Headaches, neck, menstrual, dizziness, frequent colds, blood pressure, fatigue, constipation, depression. You may have that, but that's not your real identity. That's not really who you are. That's not how God created you to be. You have a kink on your nerve system. You need to get an x-ray. Let me measure it so I can do the same thing for you that they did for Jim McMahon there. Acid reflux, attention focus, numbness, food intolerances, sleeping problems, sciatica, low allergies, um, eczema. And again, if you have that and you're getting adjusted... Be patient. Your body's healing. It'll go away. If you have that and you're not getting adjusted, then let's get your spine checked. That's the first place to look, neurologically. If you know somebody that has that and they want to know how they can get better, it's real simple. You have this in your hand here. It has Jesse. It's $99 for the first visit or $149 for their family to come in. How many people do you think that you know that have this going on with them? And they're looking for the magic vitamin and it ain't the answer right now. It's getting the pressure off the brainstem. So if you want to know how people can find us and have fun like you're having fun in healing, it's simply you bring them in here, set them an appointment for their x-ray and exam. We'll take good care of them and we'll do the rest. And we'll show their x-rays to them. We'll show them their numbers and say, here's why you're suffering. Here's what we're going to do to get you better. Then we'll help you detox. Then I'll, we'll breathe new life into your beliefs. And down the road, you'll be better. You'll be better and be stronger. Okay? So if you're a guest, fill your sheet out. You have it in your packet. Circle your appointment. If it's just for one person, it's $99, not $270. It's one person. If it's you or more people, it's, one, it's $145, I believe. Yeah, $145, $149, something like that. Okay. And all your x-ray is is a scalpy. <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is is a scalpy. Oh, there it is right there. Just wait for the slide, Dr. Ivey. So $99 for one person, $149 for a family. Now, patience. Watch me. We x-ray you. You're getting adjusted. And I give you your red bag. 
Your bread bag is called your spinal what? Brush. Because if you brush your teeth daily, what happens to your teeth? If you brush your spine daily, what happens? Your brain stays happy. Okay? Because I can't control when you go out to everything you do, but I can give you a red bag, and if you use it every day, your brain will be happy. Happy brain means happy body, happy life. But what does that look like, Dr. Arve? I'm so confused. I walk here and see everybody doing all kinds of things. Allow me to demonstrate, okay? Watch. You have your red disc on a chair. You sit on the chair like this. Okay. And you're going to wobble. How many times a day? Three. What do I say? I didn't ask you how many times you actually wobble. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why? Because you're in this position eight to ten hours a day. So yes, I want you doing something throughout the day to keep your brain happy. So it's not about back pain, why don't hurt? I'm not asking you because you hurt. I want to keep your body green grass. This is watering the grass on a daily basis. So you're gonna go side to side. How many times each way? 100. Come on, 30 each way at least, if not 100. Right. One, two, three. I close my eyes because sometimes I get dizzy, okay? <laughs> so side to side. My brain right now is going, yes, we love this. Woo! <laughs> Brainstem is stretching. So I do this. Then I'm going to go back and forth like this. My brain's going, yes, I'm going to make him look younger. I'm giving him a man bun. He's going to be strong. And then you go twist side to side. If you're really fancy, you get your knees going the opposite way. Okay. You can do this at home. You can do this while you're driving your truck. You can do this while you're at work, do it in the middle of church. Pastor don't like it too bad. Okay. So, 30 times each way, my brain right now has been stretched. My spinal cord has been stretched. My nerves are delivering life to my body now. And I just spent one minute doing that. Okay? Three times a day. Breakfast. I don't, you, don't, you don't even have to be on the wobble disc. You can just be in your chair. Sometimes I'm at the gym in between sets and I'm wobbling because I want my spine to be strong and healthy for what I'm about to go do. Okay? Then you do your traction. Now, I've been watching you over here. So now here's why I'm going to do this. You're not to hang yourself. You're not to pick your feet up. You're not to jerk, jerk, jerk. This is your spinal cord. I just want your spine to stop going this way and start going this way, like this curve is supposed to be. So you hang it on your door. Now, I will grant it, some of your doors and houses are weird. Or I shouldn't say weird. They're difficult to deal with, OK? So let me just show you some ideas, OK? First of all. What you want to do is this goes under your chin, this goes under your neck. This is technically too short for me, but that's okay. I'm going to split my pants. I will lower down like this. This is how I, and I have to come get close to the door. This is the right position. Not like this. <laughs> All you're going to do is jerk your head forward. And you're going to get mad at me on your x-ray going, I'm getting worse. Well, I don't know. Are you doing your hat rehab? Yeah, I'm doing it every day but you're doing it the wrong way, okay? So we want to go up and down, not back and forth. So up and down, okay? Uh, sorry. So we want to go up and down. I know you all deal with this, so up and down. Put your hands here if you can. One, two, three, mm, mm. just like this. Not jerking, just little stretches. If, you, if the door is too close, put your hands at your side. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Don't give yourself TMJ. Just look up to the ceiling. Don't do this. I don't want to see that either. I just want your head up in a C position and give it a little encouragement. The pad has to be low on your neck, not up high on your neck, low on your neck, and a little traction. Or this motion. Don't turn to your friend and go, what? <laughs> like this. Okay? And right now my brain's like, oh, hallelujah. Everything about me is working better. My blood pressure, my hormones, everything. Everything, because I put my spine where my brain can get to my body now. Right? Then, if I'm going to go to bed, I put the fat roll under my neck, lower neck, and the skinny roll under my lower back, but right basically where my elbow hits. Not down here, right here. And this goes low right here. So when you lay, 
you're supporting your curves, and your brain then, while you're sleeping, can whoo, repair you and heal you from the day. It's all about the brain connection. This has nothing to do with back pain. Nothing. Well, it hurts when I lay there for so long. Yeah, I know. So when it begins to hurt, take it out. If that begins to hurt, stop doing it. If wobbling hurts, go up to the point and then stop. It's all about getting your spinal cord and your brain flowing loosey-goosey again, okay? Then, during the day, once a day, put those under your pillow. You're going to take your head weights, half pound, one pound, two pounds. That's about it. Put it on your head. Sacrificing my man bun for you people. <laughs> That's my wife. That's saying a lot. Okay, so now I have my head weights on. You can stand there and march in place. You can walk around the neighborhood. You can walk through school if you want to. And you just wear it. Okay? We have the vibe platforms here for you. Or you can just sit and watch TV. Not on your phone. Watch out. You can just sit, watch TV. Don't read. You'll get a nasty headache. Just wear your head weights. Well, Dr. Joe, after a few minutes, it hurts. Fine, take them off. You're not ready for longer. But wear it for at least five minutes a day. No more than 20, because your brain will blow out. You don't need it more than 20. Just wear it for five minutes a day. If you do this every day, you're going to have amazing health, amazing life, amazing emotions. This is it. It's that simple. You have no reason to get Alzheimer's or diabetes or cancer if you take care of your brain nervous system first. I'd rather you do this on a daily basis than change your diet. But if you do this on a daily basis, your brain's going to get happy and it's going to say, hey, I don't want to smoke anymore. Stop doing that. And you stop smoking. Hey, I don't want to eat that crap anymore. I don't, it doesn't even taste good anymore. I want some vegetables. And you, you just start obeying what your brain tells you. Your body starts, de stop, starts detoxing all by itself. So I wanted to go through that to make sure that I had it on video that what do I want you to do on a daily basis is that. Why? Because that's what makes your brain happy. That will revolutionize your life and you'll, you'll, you'll do have amazing healing. You'll live at green grass. That's why. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? Okay. Yeah. So again, de now, I don't even want to go into detox or positive affirmations unless you're doing that every day. Because the detox and the positive affirmations won't, won't work on a grumpy brain. It won't. You have to get the brain working right so that when you eat good food, it can recognize what it is and distribute it where it needs to go. Okay? Or when you say a positive affirmation, the brain can go, oh, I can work on that now. I can work on that now. That's what the whole point of why the nurse system comes first. You can't do anything with the grass until you water it first. Okay? So, now, detoxing, oxygen. You have, so, once you get your nurse system going, then you start exercising. You get oxygen to your cells. Physical activity, according to Dr. Pormutter, MD, exercise your way to better memory. Literally, again, it's the new neurons preventing, preventing neural degeneration, but excess sitting increases the risk of disease. Movement, oxygen. Come work out with me on Saturday mornings at 8.30. I'll show you how to do all this in 12 minutes. It's not hard. It's just different. Again, exercise new pathways, right? Gets rid of addictions, improves your mood, self-esteem, and decreases stress while decreasing impulsive behavior. Eat that donut now, right? <laughs> and it maximizes lean oxygen. Again, physical exercise, single most important thing you could do for your brain. Is this exercise here? Yeah. Is, is doing burpees, push-ups, stuff like that? Yes. Why do I like burpees? Because they, sorry, but they, they suck. They're hard. But yet, yeah, one exercise does it all, okay? A burpee is where you fall down to a push-up position, then you come back up and jump and clap. If I did it, I'd pull all this out. Okay? Uh -huh. I'll, I'll have to get a video on burpees sometimes. But they work. Every Saturday, come in at Saturday 30, I'll work you out as part of your care plan. Let's have fun. So again, once you, once you start doing the exercise, again, just five minutes a day. We're not talking like an hour or two. Right? Just little bits. Go for a fast walk. But then it is a time, once your nerve system is going, it is exercising, now it's time to eat clean and get the poisons out of your body. And so, first of all, eat your vitamins meaning eat food, eat food, right? Eat food, take a picture of that one. That's a whole other three hour workshop right there. Eat food. And again, you might need to walk through the junk food aisle like this. <laughs> Do you see that one? Do you see them? 
He's got his cross. I got it. You see it? I got it. I thought you'd like that one. Hey, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Every bite you take is either fighting disease or feeding it. It's really up to you. It's really up to you. And so, again, what about sugar cravings? How do you beat them? First of all, you feed them. Everything you see there, you use to beat your sugar cravings, right? 10 o'clock at night, and your brain says, I want some Ben and Jerry's. And you say, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. I want some ice cream. I want some Fruity Pebbles. I want that cake. <clears throat> Dinner did not satisfy me. No, your brain is out of balance. It's toxic. You, didn't, you skipped breakfast. You didn't get enough protein and fat in your day, so, the, so the, the effect of that is a sugar craving. Well, just suck it up, willpower, and go to bed. Good luck with that. <laughs> right? Because you're, why do they say sugar, plum, sugar plums dancing around in your head? Because you got, you're like, right? Santa Claus ain't getting those cookies. I'm going to go down and eat them, right? <laughs> so you're not lacking, you're lacking protein, not sugar. Yeah. Break out the almond butter and the apple. Yeah. Slice it up. Start eating it. Eat the whole apple, maybe that's enough. If you need two, eat two. Now, can you do that forever? No, you know, down the road we'll tweak that, but right now you need to feed your brain fat and protein. If you want to get fancy, take the almond butter, a dip of coconut oil, put some 100% cocoa nibs on it. We call that Dr. Joe ice cream. You're feeding your brain, you're feeding your sugar craving. After two weeks of that, sugar craving is gone because you gave your brain what it wanted, what it needed, okay? Eventually they go, they go away. That's how you beat sugar cravings right there. You feed it. Don't suck it up and try to willpower it. Okay? Eat breakfast. After we're done here at 5 o'clock, I'll be making Dr. <laughs> Joe coffee over there. I'll show you. We'll talk more about it. And again, if you want to clean up your brain right now, again, this isn't very fancy, but it works. Nothing's hard here. Doesn't cost a lot of money, but it works. Cut out bread, rice, and pasta. Why? Because you're getting the gluten out. When you, when you have a sugar addiction, when you eat bread, rice, and pasta, especially bread um, and pasta, your body sees it as sugar. And it just feeds the sugar addiction. Okay? So you got to cut it out. Sugar or sweeteners? Pink pack, blue pack, yellow pack, sugar. Cut it out. Okay? What about maple syrup or honey, Dr. Arve? Cut it out if you want to kick the addiction. If you're used to using Splenda and you switch to honey, fine. You're going the right direction. But eventually you want to cut that out too. Okay? It's still sugar. Well, I bought it at Whole Foods. It's still sugar. <laughs> Non-dairy milk or cheese. Why? Because the genetic makeup of a cow and the casein isn't designed to be in our bodies. Okay? That's a whole other four-hour workshop. Just cut non-organic dairy out. If you can get the raw dairy, you're fine. If you can get the raw goat milk, you're even better because of the healing effects it has on the brain. There's a reason why Moses drank it and he lived 120 with full function, okay? I'm just saying. Alcohol, soda, and juice is sugar to your brain. Artificial ingredients, if you can't pronounce it, it's toxic to your brain. And then processed foods. Again, you, if you can't pronounce it in the ingredients, it doesn't belong in your brain or in your body. If God didn't make it, it shouldn't be in your body because it'll shut your brain down, shut your body down. Yes? Stevia, as far as sweeteners, again, stevia doesn't really spike your blood sugar very much, so it's an alternative. I just don't like the way it tastes. So you can try it. Don't overdo it, or the cookies will be horrible. But stevia, some people have issues with xylitol in the gut. It all depends. It all depends. But if you will feed yourself the apple, the pretty Granny Smith apple or Fiji apple, and the almond butter, and feed that for your sweetness, whenever you have that sugar craving, or whenever you want to do something between snacks and do that, you'll find that you're more full, you're more satisfied, and you have less cravings. So you won't even need the stevia down the road, okay? I use the dropper sometimes if I, if I do use it, right? I don't use the pack. I haven't figured that out yet, okay? I haven't figured that one out yet. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. And then process, and then burpees, okay? So what's a burpee? A burpee is this. All right, I got to do one. I feel, 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 the, feel the need to do it, okay? So I can do it. See, prove, prove to the devil my, my, my ankles better. So you go down like this. You come down. You go back up and you clap. Now, you're like, that's crazy. Then you get on a chair, you grab a chair, and you step back, step back, and you come up. Okay? Or you go to the bottom part and you come up. There's different versions of it. Okay? Depends on how you want to do it. Okay? That's a burpee. Fat burning smoothie. Did you like the smoothie today? Yeah. Feed your brain, feed your body, detoxes you every morning. 
put the greens in it, which is chocolate vegetables, put the protein in it, which is, um, there's a whole other problem with eating meat that was raised in corporately. It's a form of mad cow disease. It gets in your brain, it attacks you, not good. That's why your beef and your meat, your feet, your meat should be grass fed. We like the protein part that we use because it's all from grass fed sources. That's a whole another two hours of lecture I won't go through right now. Spinach, perfect protein, yummy, yummy, yummy. And again, eat foods with magnesium. Not all of them, just find one you like there. Take the picture. You like beans and lentils, avocados, whole grains? Why is it good for your brain? It's got magnesium in it, nuts and seeds, pecans. Be careful pecans, though. <laughs> I started gaining weight a few weeks ago. I'm like, what is going on? So I started writing everything down, put it on my computer. All of a sudden, like pecans, like a handful of pecans, over 1,000 calories, like 86 grams of fat. And in my body, that's a no good. That's a no good. That means the love handles will grow for right now. <laughs> So I got off pecans. But some of you may eat pecans, OK? Add, add foods with folate. That's good for you, too. Food, not what pill can I take. Food, OK? Spinach, artichokes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I love me some Brussels sprouts. Avocado, again, avocado. So avocado is magnesium and folate. So there you go. Be efficient. Even avocado, double dipping. <laughs> Pinto beans, right? Asparagus, kidney beans, black beans. That's folate. You need, your brain likes that. Zinc. Again, why did your grandmother not have problems with, it? with Alzheimer's? Because she, they were eating this stuff. Kidney beans, spinach, flax seeds, lamb. I love lamb. Chickpeas, cashews, cocoa, cocoa powder, and chicken. Zinc. Grass-fed beef. Can coconut oil treat Alzheimer's disease? Boy, you guys are so smart. Watch this one. So, Doctor, you've been on this, uh, this trek for five, six Almost years? Almost five years, four and a half okay. years. So, and you mentioned that it's just, <clears throat> your husband's just one case, but you saw improvement mm -hmm. with coconut oil mm -hmm. with his Alzheimer's. In the last five years, mm -hmm. what else have you seen, mm -hmm. you know, with other patients that have tried this uh, throughout the country? Yeah, yeah. Well, so it didn't get out in the, in the big press, mm -hmm. but it got out in the grassroots method. I basically... Um, uh, tried to present this information at the Alzheimer's Association in the exhibit hall um, in 2008. I had written an article and it basically was a case study of um, Axona and they had a booth. Um, they just weren't, at, it just wasn't available at that point. Um, but they turned me down and they wouldn't let me distribute the information. And this was to 5,000 researchers. And, you know, my feeling about that was these people are intelligent enough that they can read this and decide is this something mm. that is logical. I mean, it's biochemistry 101, you know, but I, I hope to simulate research that maybe someone there would uh, pick up the gauntlet, you know, and, yeah. and research ketones. Um, but that didn't happen. So um, I started, um, I had uh, uh, written an article and I started distributing it to health food stores uh, locally. And then the um, St. Petersburg Times in Tampa um, picked up on it and they ran a story. And that's when it really started getting out on the internet. And um, then after that, I started hearing back from people who had also tried it. And um, I've personally collected about 220 case reports. Um, most of them are people with uh, various types of dementias, mostly Alzheimer's. Um, but I have heard from, um, for example, there's a man with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. And he's been taking about nine tablespoons of coconut oil now for um, over three years, and he's been stable for three years. And this is a disease where um, it's uniformly fatal, oh, yeah. you know, usually by three to five years uh -huh. into the disease. And he's been stable now for almost four years. Um, he was two years into the disease at that point. Um, uh, he is actually um, uh, the 700 Club, they did a little story on Steve and I last January, and they are going to run a follow-up story, and he's uh, interviewed. He's going to be on this story. Mm -hmm. um, also, a man uh, with Parkinson's, um, he'll be featured. Um, he started taking it last January and regained uh, balance so that he was able to start skiing again and some things, really? <laughs> interesting wow. things like that. But I've heard from about maybe 15 people with Parkinson's that feel that they've had a significant improvement. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are subtle. Um, uh, more gradual, mm -hmm. and some people are fairly dramatic. Um, I felt that Steve was uh, relatively dramatic. Um, over two weeks, you yeah. know, he had really, um, a lot of symptoms uh, had uh, improved, you know, just mm -hmm. over a relatively short time. 
you mentioned you had over 200 uh, cases that you have uh, have mm -hmm. seen. And it, when it comes to Alzheimer's or d dementia, what's the I don't want to say success rate, but mm -hmm. have have a majority of them seen improvement or at mm -hmm. least a slowing down of the progression? Or? Yeah, it's a little hard to say um, because I don't know uh, the people that write to me, if they don't respond, I think they're less likely to write to me. Sure. Uh, the people that have, but I do have people that the write to me and say we saw absolutely no response. <clears throat> but I'd say nine out of ten people that write to me um, feel that there was some improvement. Okay. That is Dr. Newport, who's a neonatologist, medical doctor, whose husband uh, had advanced Alzheimer's. He had the bad gene that said, there's no way you're going to get better. And so uh, she wrote a book about it. So it's called Mary T. Newport, The Story of Ketones. What happens is that the brain feeds off sugar and it shuts down. When the brain begins to get fed ketones, then it begins to come alive again. The nutrition plans that we give you have always been high fat, sorry Scott, good carbohydrates from vegetables, good fats, good proteins, you know, so everything we've teached you in this nutrition book that we've had out for, I don't know, 10 years now, is the paleo, is the ketogenic, is the, all that stuff, we, it does all that, just eat right food, eat clean protein, Eat most of your vegetables or your carbohydrates and have good fats and don't skimp on it. So let me demonstrate, according to her research, your anti-Alzheimer's protocol, okay? Watch. Go to your house. Does anybody have one of these in their house? Okay. They don't cost much. You can use your fingers, but I won't because Mrs. Arby will get mad at me, okay? You take a teaspoon. Well, you know, take one of those if you're a rookie, if you're a beginner. And you open up and you do this. And you pull it up. Now, if you want healthy gums and fight off tooth decay and reverse cavities, you put that in your mouth, you go in the shower, and while you're in the shower, I'm sorry, it's going to melt. <laughs> you swish it around in your mouth for 20 minutes. It pulls all the junk out, and then you spit it into a cup and throw it away. Don't spit it down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> or you, well, not after you swish it around, no. no. No? if you swish it around for 20 minutes, that's pulling all the toxins oh. out of your body and out of your gums and out of your teeth. Spit it out. You don't want to swallow that. No. But, now, what did my brain just do when I just did this? Oh. Woo! Man! I'm going to give him another three months of life! And he's going to remember his name and all his grandkids' names and his wife's name. And no one's going to have to worry about him. That's what just happened. Is that difficult? Do I need to do it again? No, no thank God. <laughs> now, I took that for you all to show you how easy it was. I, and when we're done, when we're done, I'll make you what I call Dr. Joe coffee. And I'll show you how I put it in my coffee, my tea, and I sip it that way, okay? But that's how you do it. Now, how much do you need? Start somewhere. Well, I hate coconut oil. Buy the capsules. Buy the capsules. MCT oil is what you need. Buy the capsules. You can drink it or however you get it, but just get it into your body. Cook with it. It's our butter in our house. Okay? Ooh, I taste good. Age 12, one to two tablespoons a day. Age 25 to 34, 45, you know, 70, up to four tablespoons a day. Is that a lot? Now, if your brain needs it. It make you fat? No, it'll make you skinny, actually. Will it raise your cholesterol? No, it'll make you healthy. It'll decrease your cholesterol, make your arteries slippery. Okay? Right there. How hard is that? How hard is that? And yet, the Alzheimer's Association shut her down. Wouldn't let her, let her present. I'm just saying. You ever get the picture of that? Okay, good. All right. And again, if you like your coffee, I threw this in for coffee lovers, tea lovers. Choose your milk. Coconut milk, almond milk, heavy whipping cream organic, okay? You can put in your stevia, you can put in your raw honey, maple syrup, or other natural sweetener, and you can add it, you can put a sprinkle of some pure vanilla extract, pumpkin spice, cinnamon, or cocoa, cocoa on there. There. Now, is that a lot better option than what you're currently doing now? Then there you go. That's why I put it up there. Again, we're never having you to ruin your fun. 
I want you eating and drinking. I mean, I eat probably 2,600 calories a day of fun food, of good stuff. But I know I'm going to eat ahead of time as well, okay? So good. And that's on, all this is on Pinterest, by the way. Get your mercury out of your mouth. It'll give you Alzheimer's. It'll give you dementia. It'll give you autism through vaccines and stuff. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Dead teeth. Do you know that if you have a root canal, some, depends on who you read, if, if you have a 100% chance, if you have a root canal on the right side, left side of your mouth, you get left breast cancer. If you have a root canal on the right side of your mouth, you get right breast cancer. It's right there. Some authors say 100% of the time. Dead tooth, dead body, dead organs. You got to keep your teeth, keep your mouth clean. Not just the cuss words, but also the mercury, okay? <laughs> and then you got to get rid of your Teflon cookware, get rid of aluminum, get, rid of the, get the crap out of your house, okay? Talk to Mrs. Irie about what she uses as far as cookware. And again, flu vaccines and drugs, are they toxic? Do they hurt your brain? <laughs> Enough said. And again, shampoos, eyeshadow, lipstick, perfume, nail varnish, fake tan, body lotion, deodorant, foundation, blusher, hairspray. Mrs. Irie still uses all that stuff to look good for me, but she does it in a non-toxic way. So check out what she has, check out what I use. Diane talked about, she has a shampoo when she uses it, she gains three pounds. And when she doesn't use it, she loses three pounds. She'll tell you that story, okay? So, and again, see Mrs. Arve. Vitamins, what about vitamins? What can I take? Well, you better take the right thing. You better take the right amount, because right now in America, we spend $36 billion a year on vitamins. Are we getting any healthier? Mm. Alzheimer's going down or going up? Yep. So we're using them all the wrong way. We're using them all the wrong way. And again, I use alternative medicine. I use natural medicine. I believe in all that you're saying. If you don't know what your spinal numbers are, and you're not doing daily, something daily to correct those spinal numbers, to make them go back to green grass, then you're not going to get the benefit of everything else you're spending money on. So, applied, so we do what's called muscle testing. It's a binary feedback loop. We find out what your body wants on a subconscious level so that you're not taking too much or not enough of a vitamin nutrition food process. You can sign up today at the end of the workshop to get tested. I don't, it's $300 if you're not a patient. There's no charge if you are a patient. We do it on Friday, Saturday mornings. Why is vitamin D important? If your vitamin D levels are in the brown grass zone, then, it, then you have an 83% chance of getting cancer. You're 11 times more likely to have depression. You have a 30% greater chance of having heart attacks. Your, your risk of diabetes goes up. Type 1, 66%. Fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, fractures. Simply because your levels of vitamin D are low in a brown grass level. Yes? When you say D, you said uh, D3. D3, the hormone D3, which really isn't a vitamin. It's a sunshine pill. But the hormone <laughs> D3, hydroxy 25, blah, 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 blah. Okay? Get your levels tested. They should be at least 80 or higher. They'll say 30 to 100 is normal, but at least 60 or higher needs to give you better protection. Okay? So D3 is important. I like ours because when your D3 levels are high enough, it shuts off any kind of brain decline or cognitive decline. Out to omega. When you have the right ratio of fish oils, 3, 6, and 9 in your body, should be a 1 to 4, a, a, a 2 to 4 ratio. Okay? People with schizophrenia have, a one to tw have the 1 to 80 ratio of brain fat or, or omega's fatty acid ratios in their brain. The average American has a 1 to 20 ratio. The further your ratio is off, the more toxic your brain is and the more issues and problems you have. Okay? That's a whole other eight-hour workshop on that. But when you balance, some of you just need omega-3s right now to bring that up. Some of you need three, six, and nines in a ratio. We muscle test and balance to find out what your body needs. This is a really good start because as you feed your brain the fat it needs, then depression and blood sugar issues, and it's an anti-inflammatory to shut your brain back to normal and make your brain happy again. Everything, everything today is 10% off. Men's multi, again, endurance blend, antioxidant blend, heart blend, prostate blend. I love it. I only take one a day. The bottle says three a day. I only take one because that's all my body takes. That's all my, all my body needs. Women's multi, again, great. One a day, most women need just one a day. Not three a day, one a day. Antioxidant blend, breast blend, hair, skin, and nails blend. Really good for people. One woman said, I noticed a difference when we were out. And again, I apologize, we were out. We couldn't get the vitamin K to make it. She noticed a difference. She tried other good products, but she noticed a difference when she got back on the woman's multi. Turmeric. 
Is it turmeric or turmeric? Shows to save your brain from toxic fluoride. We've had turmeric or curcumin or turmeric. and we, got, we have the bone broth. We have the daily defense because we feed our body turmeric because it's good for you. Oh, and one of the side effects is it detoxes is it helps my brain detox the junk out. So we like daily defense. has curcumin, which is turmeric, but also Indian gooseberry. Great antioxidant, cardiovascular support, combats all cell damage like skin, things like that. And again, collagen. I like the collagen. I'll show you how we put it in the coffee stuff. Doesn't taste, put it in there, and it helps your skin, helps your joints, helps your gut heal like it's supposed to. There it is right there. Mobilizing turmeric, coffee protein. You tasted some of that today, or the collagen, okay? And again, <clears throat> let me tell you this story. This little girl was vaccine injured, okay? Look at her picture. Notice how she's looking right at you. First picture the mom ever saw where she looked at you. Because of the vaccine damage that the toxins did to her brain, she would never look right at the camera. She'd never look right at you, which is common with Asperger's or autism or phases of that. This is the first picture because we've been adjusting her. She was on the kids' detox product, little bits, daily, 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 speech pattern coming back. And this is the first picture she's taken with the baby, looking, the child looking right at her. That's what happens here. How that happened? I don't know. I just started adjusting her, started praying for her, fed her what her body needed, and she started detoxing. Her brain came back to life, and now she looks at you when she takes her picture. That may not be a big deal to you, but to this mom, it's everything. It's everything, right? Okay? So again, everything 10% off today. Get some brain food if you want some. So again, positive. Let's wrap this up. We talked about exercise. talked about your brain. We talked about diet. We talked about cleaning up, using this only when you need it. Well, what about this? How do you see your own? Everybody close your eyes right now. Close your eyes right now. Okay, see yourself today. Do you see yourself happy? Do you see yourself strong? Do you see yourself, okay, let's even have more fun. See yourself naked right now. <laughs> In the mirror, by yourself. No one's there, no one's there, no one's there. Just you and God, just you and God. Do you like what you see? For some reason, I'm seeing, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Mrs. Arve naked right now. All right, open your eyes. If you didn't like what you saw, you don't have to stay there. It doesn't have to keep getting worse. Just realize what you saw was an accumulation of the last 90 days, the last year, the last five years of having trauma, being toxic, or stinking thinking. Or it's the result of working on your traumas, work detoxing, and thinking well about yourself, and four years later, at 69 years old, Miss Diana's doing better. And she keeps with it, she'll keep getting better. So, what do you see yourself now, and what's the plan to see a better you one year, five years, or ten years from now? A lot of us, you won't do this if you don't see a picture or a reason to do it for. Again, when you walk in here, what do you expect? A thimble size of healing or whatever God's got for you that day healing? The winner of the 2017 People's Choice Award is presented to Adjustments for Life and Dr. Joseph Arve for having the best product or service and overall customer satisfaction. Adjustments for Life is a maximized living center and it's just an amazing place for people to come and get healthy. Call me crazy, but what we do in this office every day is the solution to the healthcare crisis. Health doesn't come from a bottle of pills, a bottle of vitamins. I mean, we've got more gyms, we've got more nutrition stores, we've got more hospitals, we've got more Walgreens, and that's all good. But if you look at the statistics of people and their health, we see cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, divorce, poor test scores, childhood obesity, childhood diabetes, all getting worse. So on one hand, we're spending all this money on healthcare, and yet society is not benefiting from all of that, except in here, that we get people back on the track of health and healing. I started this health thing back in 1987 by going to chiropractic college, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And then I got out in 1991, I came to Colorado in 92, and man, I've been, I've been telling the same message. 
that your body needs no help to heal, just no interference. And every year, medical science has been validating what I've been doing here and what I've been saying for the last 25, almost 30 years. We call it Spine Geek Nation. I like to see a life-giving center like this in every city across the world because what we do gives people back their health. It gives them back their hope. It gives them back their future. I'm still working six days a week. Why? Because the need is there. We see a lot of people. Why? Because the need is there. It's not that I have big goals to see a lot of people. It's that I realize that one in three women are on the road to being diagnosed with cancer sometime during their life. One out of two men. And so people say, oh, you're busy. How many do you see? I say, not enough because the, the need in our city is like this and we're just scratching the surface. So the vision of what I do right now, after 25 years, I'm trying to put everything down into a system that I can give my children, that I can give other doctors to take around the world so we can put an end to sickness and suffering. Dr. Joe has a gift and a talent for reading the body. He warms us up, gets us on the table and treats individually what's needed. It's been a blessing to come here with the problems that I've had and come out with solutions. It's amazing who we get to see. You know, I was the chiropractor for the Colorado Rapids, professional athletes, when they won their championship in 2010. Um, I take care of Olympic athletes. I was a maximized living doctor for uh, the Olympic team for wrestling and for judo in 2012 and our athletes won gold medals. Uh, I was in Rio, Brazil and our, our Olympic athletes won gold medals there. So we take care of a lot of high level athletes but also we take care of newborn babies because of birth trauma. We take care of children because of ADHD and autism and just you know all the health, childhood health issues. We take care of teenagers because right now teenagers, the health of teenagers suffer the most. And where can they go to get a really a non-toxic, healthy, loving healthcare provider, that's what we provide. And then adults, families, seniors, we want to keep them out of the nursing home. And so we really have a, a variety. We don't have an ideal customer. If you have a spine, if you're breathing, if you want to be healthy and maximize your health, that's who we see. My key to success, you know, I've been here 25 years and it's not easy being in business for 25 years. And so I have to say God first, that this is his place. My family lets me be me. So my wife of 28 and a half years, she puts up with me. My children, we were family owned and operated for many years. My children work here. My team, I just love them to death and, and their family. Our mission is people. Um, it's all about people. And we, you know, we tell people that in this office is life and fun and healing. Let us put your needs first and, and figure out what you need to be healthy, be happy and be strong. And as we people really genuinely feel that we care about them, then that, you know, we never have a problem with new business or anything else because when you love people, they, they love you back and it's, it's a fun place. And that's why we've been here for 25 years.